Hello, friends and enemies, heroes and villains. Welcome to Epic Realms Presents Off the Pod. It's not a podcast. Podcast. It's kind of a podcast, but it's not really a podcast. I mean, it's not a podcast, but it's it's kind of a podcast. I feel like it's a podcast. It's kind of a podcast, but it's not really. A, it is, but it isn't sort of thing. I don't. I don't. I don't really know. Does we are joined like by the King Aiden IV. Four is it? Am I supposed to pronounce it? I never asked you this. Am I supposed to pronounce it four or IV? I always go four. IV, I guess, helps people who don't know Roman numerals. I guess. <laughs> well, I thought it was like it's IV, like because you know you're getting a drip put in there and a little. <laughs> Not a bad idea, you know. I could actually, you know, get a little bag there and be like, I'm gonna hydrate while streaming. Yes, yes, <laughs> a bag of uh, straight. Liquor. <laughs> Saline solution, hopefully. Nothing nothing too bad, right? Just Vodka put it in. Just put it directly in. Just... My blood oh! <laughs> it burns! Oh, man. Ooh. This is what it feels like to be Russian, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know, we, we have community members that are Russian. They might take offense to that. Or they might I, be like, that's accurate. That's accurate. I do drink a lot of vodka. My bloodstream may be pretty close <laughs> <laughs> so for those that don't know king aiden iv is a king aiden IV. see i said it that way king aiden is a streamer like here on twitch he does a lot of stuff he used to do a lot of dead by daylight now you've been doing a lot more uh i keep wanting to say warhammer but it's not warhammer or is it Warhammer? it, it, it is warhammer, it is warhammer. It's, warhammer. It's, it's total war warhammer yeah it's based off the tabletop i i love it a lot good strategy i used to play the tabletop love building those models you do a lot of models right for D D and stuff do you have uh, i've painted a handful i've got a bunch yeah what a so sure. relaxing and so do, relaxing. do you know who andy lies then uh yes yeah yeah i've heard the name he's gonna be on the podcast next week oh sweet andy lies a uh big 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 warhammer creator created all the rpgs and and did a lot of the mini miniature rules so and thought. stuff like that and he also did the cartography for critical role if you know critical role and uh, their yep their stuff uh with matt mercer and all them he did the cartography for uh for their little world a little world it's a ginormous world so is he going to be taking questions next week yeah uh, yeah they, after after the podcast is over we'll be doing questions so okay because i so, think yeah. if i remember he did the eldar army which was one of the factions for 40k oh, you'll have to double check yes, hello renfield will, welcome hello nick how are you <laughs> this wednesday i am treating my mom to the cinemas to see the flash oh you'll have to let me know how the flash is I'm. I want to see it. I'm torn because, like, I want to see. I want to see Michael Keaton Batman, but I don't want to see Ezra Miller because f him. But I also want to see if Grant Gustin's <laughs> in there, and he if he take. You know, there's rumors that he takes over. So, and you're, you're going to see Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I I also want to see that. A lot of people hated the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I was like, that was a great. Movie. I like that movie. People were like, oh, it's so weird. I'm like, or it's so it's so fakey i'm like have you not watched indiana jones i mean that is indiana jones i mean that's pretty much sums it up i i, I don't know i didn't think the crystal skull was bad i like the crystal uh, skull uh yeah i i i don't know i i mean marion i love seeing a reprisal yeah i mean shia labeouf was didn't was unnecessary but uh, uh, yeah, that guy's been through so much trials and tribulations. I kind of give him a pass. <laughs> and Hello, I, Redneck Guy. I, welcome on in. My personal favorite would have been Nathan Fillion to be um, uh, the the replacement for Indiana Jones. Yeah, I think that would have been. I think that would have been good had they done it twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's just yeah, like if they, they made an Uncharted movie, they should have made it twenty years ago because Nathan Fillion would have been perfect. Not only is does he look identical? CGI, my friend. To Uncharted. CGI. We can do it. We can we can make see. I mean, you've seen CGI Carrie Fisher. That's true, but it's not <laughs> the same. There, there's a thing, you know, I was talking with another streamer, Supernatural Writer today. She was talking about like at what point, like it's unethical. I, yeah, I at what point, like you're making money off of somebody who has passed away. Yeah. You know, how do you like even if you have the family's permission, is it right? Like, what if they didn't want to do it? They were. We were talking about the the Fast and the Furious movies and Paul Walker. It's like, yeah, but okay. So I, I I'm actually on you, but to be devil's advocate, right? Yeah, because you're and, one and, of these guys. Yeah, transhumanism. Once somebody starts uploading themselves, 
are you going to let them still act to take away potential work? Because, I mean, you're using their image of a body they no longer have. It, I mean, it's going to get weird. All the, I mean, I'm, I just think it's a fascinating concept. That's all. Wanted to throw that out of right field. Like Carrie Fisher, she's passed away, but let's say, you know, it happens to Mark Hamill, but you have the capability of uploading his consciousness into a computer. Do you still, yeah. where do you draw the line, right? It's yeah. going gonna, gonna to be weird. It's it going to be weird. For sure. And Willem Dafoe is joining the cast of Beetlejuice 2 with Michael Keaton and Johnny Depp and Jenny Ortega. I didn't know Johnny Depp was oh in there. I knew the God. other ones were in there. Yeah, I'm excited uh, for Beetlejuice too. Michael Keaton said it's the he. Um, I th I'm pretty sure they they're done filming with that, but I think that will that uh, uh, Michael Keaton said that it's the most fun he's had in like 20 years on a movie. Oh, he, said he had so much fun doing the sequel to Beetlejuice that it's it's really Sick. good. So I'm excited for that. I mean, the original was absolute favorite. Is it still Tim Burton? It's yeah, Tim Burton. yeah, it's Tim yeah. Burton and Michael Keaton and, and a new story, I guess. Um, yeah, Jenna Ortega is in it, and uh, um, Winona Ryder is reprising. I heard role. she's coming. Briefly, okay, yeah. and I think even the mom from the movie—I I forget the actress's name—but she was like the mom from Home Alone and and stuff. Yeah, and she, I think she is also going to make a small cameo in the movie too. So, hello, Katie, awesome. welcome on in. Well, for that, we are hanging out with King Iden. We got a lot of fun topics today. Um, we're going to start off with a uh, a topic that um, it, that really it really kind of stemmed from like I would have never known uh, this about you is you're you're an exercise person you're a go to the gym go to the gym type person and here let me start the timer let me start the timer Catherine O'Hara yeah that's her name Catherine O'Hara mm. um, yeah. But yeah, you're you're a gym person. I would have never found that out had it not been for the Fitbit challenge and the stuff we were doing until Fitbit killed all of their their group challenges. Now I now Fitbit is worthless to me. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even need, I don't even wear the band anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, working out. I I got in a wreck a couple of years ago, probably like five, three years ago or so. And I uh, had hypertension really bad. And I was sitting there going, what am I doing? You know, I was overweight. Was hypertension, it's high blood pressure. Oh, okay. And uh, saw that. I was like, you know what? I'm going to start working out, change my diet. I like to be in good shape, especially when my daughter was right about the time she's coming along. I was like, kids take a lot of energy. You got to be in shape. Chasing yeah. around after them is exhausting. And I just wanted to, uh, that's, that's why I still try to keep maintaining working out. It's just so I can keep up with her. Yeah, Monkey Swag said, "I just got back from the gym." <laughs> That's the way to go, man. It would would you hit today? Yeah, would you do Monkey Swag? Show tell us in the chat what you were what you were working on. I uh, I used to so with all the stuff I did when I was wrestling, I had to work out all the time. Um, long story about that. There was an issue with. It. Long story short, when I was wrestling, I couldn't gain weight because I had celiac disease, but didn't know it. So I'm doing all this exercise, but I'm eating all this protein but it was wheat protein and so it's going right through you so yeah and my body yeah. couldn't absorb the nutrients because my intestines were destroyed i was just constantly i was making myself sick because i was doing all this exercise but i wasn't getting the nutrients to replenish my body so i yeah. was literally killing myself that's um, horrible oof yeah so yeah so but i did a lot of i did a lot of workouts we actually had to do before we could have our first match we had to be, be able to do 500 hindu squats straight through and like okay. most people don't like there's a squat and then there's a hindu squat most people yeah. like either way whatever it is people are like how the fuck do you do 500 like and i i i've since then i did some um a lot of my uh, electives when i was going to college uh uh five ten years ago they were you know they were like here's your you have to do these tests and you have to meet these certain requirements and they're like can you do uh one of the requirements was like 10 squats or something like that and i was like give me a break <laughs> 10 mm -hmm. squats and they're like oh it's really hard i'm like and i told the i told the the teacher i was like i could probably sit here and do 50 or six. like all the other we're stuff i was worthy. like struggling we're not yeah. worthy <laughs> we're not worthy thank you mucky mcfly for the we're not worthy and so i sat i there i was like i could probably i haven't done it in a couple of years but i could probably do 50 right now and the instructor was like, there's no way you could do 50. I'm like, 
I do 50, will you let me, like, any... Yeah, uh, will you let me go? <laughs> yeah. for, I, I think it was, like, every 10 I did over the max or something like that, um, I could pass one of the other tests or something like that. And she mm. she didn't let it fly. Well, she said yes, but she didn't let it fly because she didn't think I'd actually do it. And then, yeah, I just pounded out 50 right there, and her eyes were like, Whoa? <laughs> But, yeah, yeah the, awesome. lately, uh, about... And, and the, one of the reasons I was like, we should totally talk about this is because... Um, this last, I don't know, two months ago, I went and saw the doctor and the doctor looked at me and he said, like, my blood pressure was fine. Um, my, my like diabetes blood levels were fine, but he, but he looks at me and he goes, if you don't do something about your cholesterol right now, I have to put you on medication. Oof. He's like, you either That's need scary. more exercise or you need to change your diet. Yeah. And usually I'm like, whatever, I'm always in shape. I'm almost always, I'm in shape, you know, being a celiac and only having restricted certain foods. Like I'm fairly in shape. I, I do a lot of outdoor stuff. Um, but the combination of winter and having three months of COVID killed my being in shape. Um, and yeah, I used to go to the gym, it will. A lot. go to the gym, gym a lot. And so now lately it's like, oh, well, I guess I'm having another salad again. <laughs> Uh, hamburger nope turkey burger sure <laughs> chicken sure so like my diet has drastically changed and i've literally in the last two weeks lost probably five ten pounds so uh seed oil is something that i would recommend avoiding seed oil is really really bad for your digestive tract and stuff and will add a lot of cholesterol i i didn't really realize that so much because everything's cooked in seed oil but uh, yeah i pretty much do all the... olive oil yeah, olive oil is actually a very good way to go. Yeah. Uh, you should do mostly olive oil. But when you, if you ever eat out, they mostly are using canola oil, which is really bad, which will really spike your cholesterol. Yeah, I think yeah, I started anything. watching all that. Again, yeah, I don't. being a celiac, I don't have to worry about eating out that much because I don't. <laughs> no, and that's a good thing. That really is a good thing. And I mean, uh, I do an animal-based diet. That's pretty much what I do. And I mean, that's helped my intestinal mood, everything like that. I, I started doing that after doing more research. I did keto for a while. And the problem I had with keto was, you know, like, oh, okay, well, I can have a little more carbs because I'm keeping the weight off. And then you spike back up again, you know? So I was like, okay, I'm just going to commit myself to an animal-based diet. And I still do sometimes keto because once in a while I'll cheat, even though I shouldn't. <laughs> like right now I'm having a beer. Yeah. Mikey <laughs> says that compared. he was doing full body exercise and some cardio to get the heart rate up. And he hates mm. those. I I I'm uh I I do uh cardio I'll do and just chasing the daughter I'll or go bike riding. Mostly when I hit the gym I just I just focus weights and that's that's kind of helped me a lot of the times with health reasons, right? Yeah. running and stuff like that as you get older your joints and stuff kind of you know i don't know I, I i don't run as much as i i i mean i will here and there but is there an exercise you prefer is there an exercise you're like this is my this is my good when you go to the gym and you don't know what to do you're like this is my go-to oh i have so many sets uh you know just your bench you know rowing i do a row weighted row you know bench press for for that uh legs so if i'm going to the gym and i don't know what to do just do legs because leg day is the most important i like i i freaking hate leg day I really hate it but anytime i go to the gym and i don't know what to do i'm like it's time to do leg day because it, it's literally your largest muscles it's going to be the most beneficial for you if you have a short workout just do your legs real quick yeah, you'll hate yourself later, but you'll say, hey, you know what? I did probably the best work I could do in such a short time, if that's all you got. Yeah. I mean, you know, we were your father just like me. So, you know, getting that gym in is almost the most difficult thing to do. And and you just got to commit yourself to it when you can. And then if not, I have stuff here at home that I try to make sure I do here at home. And then I, I still pay for the gym membership to just guilt myself to go to the gym when I can. Because if I'm like, if I'm putting money to it, I better <laughs> see. I have my other problem. I look, I'm like, God, I should really cancel this. I'm not using it. Like two years later, you know, since COVID, my, oh, my, yeah. wife, got a, my wife got a gym membership and we were going to start going together. We were going to pick a couple Good. days a week to go together. And then COVID hit. Like we finally then, buckled yeah, down. Yeah. And then COVID hit. It's yeah. like, okay, well, because I had one then, and I was sick of not using it. Then recommit yourself because you're sitting there going, that's just money you're throwing down the toilet. And, and, and it's like, this is saving me money in the long run to not have to go to the doctors. 
right? Thinking about it that way, going, this will save me probably $2,000 by paying the $45 a month. Yeah. I, I, I wish I had someone near me. I know. It's kind of on the same buddies. schedule. Because that, that's, to go with somebody, there's there's the accountability. Monkey Swag was talking yeah. about, he's got to go because it's, he's got a trainer that yells at him. Um, because like, even with a trainer, like if you have somebody that you're with, um, like, I, I, I barely I'm... get get to meet with my buddy, but you are 100% correct. When I meet with him, it's accountability. And then I also go just to go, okay, I'm going to meet up with him again here in a week or two. And I don't want to underperform when I meet up with my workout buddy. So yes, a workout accountability buddy is great. It is literally one of the best things you can do. You just got to try to find somebody up. You'd be like, Nick, identity, we're going. <laughs> <laughs> You're driving all the way here. We're meeting. Drive. Right. I mean, but you're Octavius, right, get down here. <laughs> if you can find somebody, it makes a huge difference. I, I'm not going to. And then lie. I got to find I, the time. That's the other. Yeah, that's the other part. Yeah, I mean, you're never going to find the time. You got to make the time. I don't have. Is... I don't have a place to make the time. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I understand. Like, that. Even like most people, it's like, oh, I don't have time, and then they they play an hour. I don't have time. Like I hardly play video games. <laughs> Yeah. My only but, yeah. time that I get to play is like when I have a podcast day and I've got a spare, like I get done with my stuff ahead of time. I'm like, I got an extra hour or two. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. I, okay. That's right. I got to go out and take care of the chickens. Then I got to go out and I got to mow the lawn and I got to weed the, the gardens. And the next thing I know, it's like back inside. Oh, it's time to go. So yeah, yeah it's too many things to do, but. Well, well I have... the kids are getting bigger, right? What's the oldest one now? I don't have kids. I have a dog. You don't have kids? Oh, see, that's the thing. It's free labor, man. You have to get kids, Nick, and then you put them to work. <laughs> yeah, they I have two neighbors that have kids, and I've seen how that works. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it depends. Yeah, but I think I, I always way. liked. I was liked doing. I liked doing cardio once I got going. Mm. Like in high school, I hated. Like they're like run for five miles. It's like no, no, I don't want to. Working out so, when somebody tells you to is never fun. Right. For sure. When somebody's but, like, hey, go do this. You're like, uh, I'd rather do my own thing. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm very much like, I want to do the running. Like, so I, I do cardio or bikes or something. Because once I got going, once I got into the gym and I got doing, going, doing that, like, I felt good about myself. And then I'd be able to do other, you know, do other stuff once I was in there. But that was always my go-to when I went to the gym. It's like cardio. I want to make sure okay. that I'm in, in like shape. I can, you know, get the sweat out and, and whatever. And, you know, that, that always seemed to keep me in a better mood. And it always seemed to keep me within my, my weight goals. I was always like, other than when I was wrestling, when I was wrestling, it was 190, 185, 190 in muscle. Um, but normally I was always about 175, uh, even at, like after I was done with wrestling, that's kind of where I went to. So. When I stopped doing martial arts tournaments, I got I got a bad car wreck. But but before that, I was literally doing. Man, I I, I would sweat myself to to high heaven. I was probably weighing, uh, well, like I was skin and bones. Like when I was doing a bunch of martial arts, because that was in high school. I was like one forty five. Now I weigh in about like two oh five. But yeah, I used to. Same thing. I used to like, like to do a lot of intense cardio inducing work. And, and I still, I mean, I, I'm not opposed to doing cardio workout or anything like that. A lot of people are like, oh, well, you do, you don't. I just, when I do cardio, um, I, I usually just don't make it part of my workout routine. Right? I, I do feel like I do enough stuff that's going to be cardio intensive just whatever i'm doing like one of my workouts i'm breathing heavy and and, and everything by the end of it anyhow because i'm barely getting my set up you know I, I like to go to failure is what i'm trying to do with weights a lot yeah. of the time do you like doing more like you do less reps more weight or more reps less weight both both uh i, I think they both are really beneficial i mean now that i'm older i i kind of do whatever i feel comfortable with Sometimes I want to do a little heavier. I'll do heavier. Uh, when I want to just do light and lots of reps, I'll do lights and lots of reps. I, I, I don't know. I think, you know, now that we're, I'm, I'm you know, in my 40s, I think when working out, I I don't want, no longer really care what everybody else is doing. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. 
then I've, I've gotten more gains from that than anything else. Yeah. I was like because... doing some of the, like the high school workouts. Like I go to a gym and it's like, yep. Sit up, sit up. I, I won't do push ups. I'll use like the bench or other machines for, for that kind of emotion. Uh, I, I, there's just something I, f I always feel uncomfortable. Like I'm going to hurt something doing push ups. Whereas if I have a machine, it's more controlled. Uh, mm. I don't know why, but like sit ups or planks or burpees, uh, pull ups, all of that kind of like stuff. Um, I always prefer to do when I'm at the gym and if I'm at home, I'll do, I, I, I would do, I do lots. I enjoyed yoga, like especially like dynamic resistance yoga was a big, something that I really enjoyed doing. Cause I really felt like I was getting a lot out of that. Yoga. You can really, I, I, I would like to start doing yoga. I'm going to wait till my daughter gets bigger and then I'm going to drag her till all that stuff, force her to yoga, start doing martial arts and stuff again. <laughs> I mean, like you said, it's better to go with a partner. And like I said, I want to also just kind of emphasize what I think is important. And I think yoga uh, is something that's not emphasized enough. Like that's something that should be going on in schools regularly because the amount of workout you get and stuff is so beneficial from it. Yeah. And, and you don't have to, you know, the whole like run three miles. It's like, I'm not a runner. You know, because yeah. there's so many people out there with asthma or whatever, but they can do yoga and you can do it on their own time and they can still get a workout. They can still get the workout. They It's it's good for their, you know, your bones and your ligaments uh, as well as your muscles. And, and you know, and it's, you know, stretching is built in and you've got the, you know, you got to you get the, the, the warm up, the real workout, the cool down. Like it's all built into a yoga routine. Um, and well, so you get and the full body. That breathing exercise too. I mean, yeah. honestly, that is just as beneficial. I mean, I, I don't know. I think that once again, another thing that should be in school is teaching people to breathe properly through the nose, out the lungs, through the nose, out the, you yeah. know, out the mouth. Timing. It's like, and or or like meditation is a huge one for yeah. as well. Like I know it. It's, I don't know if meditation really counts as like workout or exercise, but it's definitely something that they should do. No, it's a hundred percent a workout. Uh, I mean, proper meditation is setting you up for your workout or cooling True. you down from your workout. So both of those, I think, apply. I mean, mentally getting yourself in the right state before you start to work out is is a huge step. I do a lot of pump up. I'm guilty of that. That's how I go to work out. I, I'll listen up and piss me off or you know intense music to get me really riled up. And then I'll, I'll go hit my workout. I try to avoid uh, pre-workout. I don't like to do that. I know a lot of people who do do that, and I'm not I'm not dissing on it. Don't get me wrong. I'll do a I'll do an energy drink like a Bang or a Realm before I'll go workout or a Zip Fizz, something that's an intimate, uh, you know energy vitamin booster, and then it, it helps with the workout. I I wish I was all natural and being able to do that. That I do not have that energy level. <laughs> Lucky, Lucky Swake says he's trying to get down to like two oh five. What are you at now? You gotta be you gotta be getting getting close to that two hundred five. Rolana Harrow says the plus part of being a theater major is learning how to breathe. Yeah, to no. with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, theater. If you remember when you were in theater, most of people, even the the bigger people, were in decent shape from theater. I mean, right. There's a lot you're doing in theater, whether it's well, learning rehearsal. how to, just learning how to project. You have to learn how to you have to learn to breathe right to project your voice properly. Not to mention all the back and forth and shit you have to do on stage. And and, and if you're taking a, a you know like I'd always play I played a cop in the last uh, theater performance I did on uh, the Laramie Project, and yeah, you know I, I thought it, it was a workout holding myself differently because the guy had different mannerisms than I were. I found that a workout because I had to control what I was doing. So yeah, I I, I think yeah theater theater in a lot of ways to me is also counts as a workout whether you want to talk about it in the sense of physicality or just mental i mean i think people would benefit from theater is is also a standardization of curriculum workout theater history you know mathematics you name it all that stuff but being able to uh put yourself into somebody else's mind is one of the key things in theater that i think is the most underrated is like, hey, I'm going to play this character. I need to put my mindset as to what this character is thinking. Yeah. Yeah, and that's difficult to try and do oh, all heck of yeah. that and focus and focus. You know, I <laughs> I had a, uh, I did, I was in um, West Side Story and I played a character 
And a lot of people like don't realize like if people screw up on stage, you have to cover that shit. <laughs> and I forgot I was in the uh, middle of I have this I have this one big scene where I like go off off the fucking walls and I'm like screaming at the gangs and whatever and all of a sudden I turn around and I, I, I say this line and my mind blanks and I forget my next line. That. <laughs> and we've all done that. And so I'm not, and I'm in this mode. I'm in this character and I'm angry and I'm pacing and I'm working up a thing. And so not only do I forget my line, but then I forget my place. So I repeat that line. Oh, but I repeated it in a different way. Like as soon as I started, I was like, shit, I already said this line. So I said it, but I repeated it in a different way. But because I repeated the line, the rest of my lines came in my mind and I went on. And I got backstage and I was so pissed. I was so angry. And I was looking at everyone. I was like, dude, that was the best one yet. Uh, You know, because they were always talk about how my attitude was or how in character, if I was like, if I was really feeling the character, like you were really feeling it on that one. I was like, what are you talking about? I screwed up. Like, what do you mean? Nobody realized it. The other actors didn't realize it. The director didn't realize it. The audience didn't realize it. Only I realized that not only did I forget my line, but I repeated the line twice and nobody knew. And that was the night that they were recording it. They didn't have a reader going, oh, you said that twice. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's freaking hilarious, man. I've done that where I've dropped dropped a line. And, and, you know, the reason nobody mostly will catch it is, A, like you said, if you do it naturally enough, they're not going to know. And B, most of us are just waiting for our next hook line we're waiting for when we're supposed to say so we're right. waiting for you for to say that magic phrase so we can carry on with the art most people will like oh i remember I was the whole script the hell you do you remember <laughs> your cues and you wait for your cues if you can remember the whole script i don't know what that is. it's time That is the the end of the timer for workout and exercise. Although we talked a little theater in there, I didn't I didn't know you were a theater person. Oh, no theater, improv. Improv. Oh, yeah. Used yeah. to be a part of an improv troupe. I love improv. I did um, the area that I worked. So I lived in northern Minnesota, and there was and I don't remember the name of the improv. But there's a there's a show that was an improv show and it was really popular up there. And I didn't I had gone to the show multiple times and then in college, my first stint of college, uh a lot there was a lot of theater and I had met a lot of people up there. And there was a connection with a connection. And so they were practicing and I got invited to go with their improv troops practice. And I just kind of popped in there. I never became part of their troupe, but I got to practice with them a ton. And mm-hmm. I think, and a lot of people don't, a lot of my friends, I don't even think realize this, that I worked with them. But I think a lot of that also helped me when I was doing professional wrestling and when I was doing uh, like Renaissance festivals and stuff with that. And I don't remember the name of the, maybe Rolana Halo remembers the the improv comedy troupe that a lot of us went to watch up there but i don't i don't uh i don't remember their names it was some improv improv comedy troupe but yeah they were really popular and i think they toured the upper midwest for a little while as well so but yeah i worked with them a guy i want to say his name was walter was a friend of theirs and i was in theater with him and he invited me along and they just enjoyed my company so they just invited me to come to all their practices and they kept saying like yeah if we ever miss a person we'll let you know and you can come come do the show with us and i was like it never happened, but it would have been kind of neat. So I was always hey, a big yeah. fan of improv. It's fun. It's just entertaining to do. It's the whole yes and. That's where I learned about yes and. Yes and. And yes. a lot of people are like, a lot. You can always tell the people that just start yes and because they actually start their sentences with yes and before they realize yeah. they don't have to say yes and. They can just, you know, it's you just, just the you... ability to go along with the with the thing. You just gotta agree with it and then throw something else out and let them hopefully take it and hope you didn't screw up too bad right. by giving them something odd. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like that, that was always my problem with improv is like uh I did 
stand up for a little bit, just an amateur, nothing serious, nothing serious, you know. And it'd be hit or miss, you know, depending on the bits. Right. Uh, but but improv. I did one show with this troupe, and it was with Dylan or Stryker, who's the guy who uh, you came by not too long ago, who who I just got into streaming. And he dropped such a horrendous bomb right in the middle. It was we had the audience going along. And then all of a sudden, I threw something out, and I was like, "Oh, please don't say something awkward, please." Don't. And it right. goes awkward, and I'm like, "And we <laughs> lost the audience." <laughs> and we were like, "Well, end end scene." Now that we're, we're done with the topic, I'm going to scroll back a real a bit. Um, somebody was talking about Renfield was talking about Ghostbusters because we were talking about movies earlier before we got started, and they said that the new Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, is getting a sequel of course there's if you're on facebook or anything or part of i'm part of all the ghostbuster groups so i'm seeing all the set design and all the set photos um but yeah apparently um he said that um they are doing uh uh, uh walter peck is supposedly going to be the next bad guy so that'll be kind of cool Ooh. or the returning bad guy. i loved the new afterlife movie i thought that it was phenomenal it was such a great touch the whole Harold Ramis thing and what they did and just it did heartstrings left and right. I hope the next one is just as well. So, so yeah, Penny just popped in. Hello, Penny. I don't okay. know if you're following along with chat or not. I, didn't. I, I am. I, I just have to have it all start reading chat. So I'm trying not to. You are more than welcome to read the, read the chat. Ghost <laughs> season three has a great episode on about improv and the yes. And really, I, I've never, I've heard go of ghosts, but I haven't gotten to watch it at all. Just finished watching Somebody. Doctor Who, Power of the Doctor today. Jodie Whittaker regenerated into David Tennant. Oh, my God. <laughs> David Tennant's back. That's the only way they could probably save that. <laughs> They've definitely been trying to do that, I heard. That's awesome. Well, interesting. I'm not a huge Doctor Who fan. I don't. I know friends. I them. am also, like, not a big fan. Uh it just was never something and i'm sure it's one of those shows that if i sat down and started i tried i'd probably be fine but i tried but yeah epic realms have you or king i seen the movie renfield i have not i want to i think it's going to i think it's going to be great i haven't got no, a chance to see it not yet i i've been listening to the dracula podcast that gets released in what can calendar order of when the book takes place so when jonathan writes a letter on whatever date they do a podcast for it um so i am interested in seeing renfield i yeah. I, I do love dracula He's i fun. uh i wanted to um oh guardians three oh i got yeah. i got offered yeah guardians of the galaxy i haven't seen it. i'm not we're we're oh just we're, we're still catching up on marvel we're on she hulk right now so we're just, we actually She-Hulk. just finished this the the late the the we just finished She Hulk this weekend. <laughs> so, what do you think? I liked it. I really liked it. The very yeah. last episode, like, I'm like, she breaks the fourth wall. I think that's great because She Hulk is the first comic book character really to break the fourth wall. Um, mm-hmm. So, I didn't mind that. I know a lot of people did, but it was um, when, she, when she literally like went to the Marvel to like get the creators to rewrite the ending. I was like, meh, I don't know about that. They could have just, they could have just done what you know what she had said and led up to that story instead of putting all that in there but Mm -hmm. meh what do you what do you do so otherwise i really enjoyed it i liked all the cameos i liked all the little the character interaction i liked the story the overall story so it was it was a lot of fun so Uh, i actually had an offer to do renfield as a uh, sponsorship a stream sponsorship the movie renfield um had a handful of people that were selected to do that and i didn't respond in time to to do it so uh it was right it was right around the time that i had covid the end, end of my covid stint so i really just didn't get a chance to do it so penny is also watching she hulk too it's so cute dude that's expensive. no spoilers hashtag spoilers penny hashtag spoilers uh but yeah, I, I enjoyed it. And we're, I think we're going to Miss Marvel next. And I think we're pretty much, other than, yeah, we haven't watched Guardians of the Galaxy. We didn't, we haven't watched Black Widow. We're skipping the Immortals because F the Immortals. <laughs> I haven't seen it either. I heard it was pretty bad. I, I, I don't know. I, I, 
I'm okay with uh, multiverse with with uh, Marvel because honestly, I've read so many multiverse from Marvel. Uh, there's the Age of Apocalypse, everything like that. I haven't really had too much of a problem there. Like other people say, they have a problem. Like, oh, it's not canon in Marvel. I'm like, really? Are you kidding me? If you've ever been a Marvel fan, then you're kind of laughing when you talk about canon. Um, Who so said that? That's one thing. Like. They've established that this is an alternate, like this is an alternate reality from the comic book. And, they, and even, they all are. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even the comic books are an out there. Show me the original timeline in the comic books. I there's like five different timelines that I've followed through the Marvel universe. And I'm still not sure which one's the set mainstream timeline. Yeah. Well, in the movies, they specifically between between all the stuff that's happening. Whether you're looking at the Loki series, whether we, this should have been a topic, Marvel should have been a topic. I loved Loki. Loki um, was such a good one. Yeah, between Loki and uh, the last Spider Man and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse, like you, you, there's so many. Oh. It's obvious. Thank you, Lyric Loss, for the next year. 20 months. We're about to be able to drink here, Lyric. Your subscription is almost the drinkable age for months i mean i don't think anybody's Whoa. gonna have a cocktail i don't think anybody's gonna hand a cocktail to a 21 month old but you know still i knew what you meant <laughs> yeah the new loki i can't wait for the new loki as well that so far um my two favorite again we're still on marvel but my two favorite um series is uh, have been loki and uh hawkeye mm. I loved Hawkeye. I, if you, Hawkeye, if anybody's yeah. read the comic, I loved book, Hawkeye. I that, thought Hawkeye was. Did amazing. you read the comic that it was based off of? I, I've read enough stuff around that farted around it that I was pretty impressed how it, Ronan. Like I've read the Ronan series that he did, which was what two thousands when that series dropped, early two thousands, something yeah. like that. Well, it's but based off, either way, if you've ever read the, there's a, a Matt Fraction. I should have Matt Fraction on the podcast. Uh, but Matt Fraction's great. comic series of Hawkeye is so phenomenal. Uh, somebody forced it down my throat. They're like, "You need to read this." It's like I don't want to read this. And then as I borrowed it because it was my wife's friend from college, and I was like, just to be nice, when because you know my wife and I had just kind of it's only been a year in our relationship, maybe two years in our relationship. And he's like, "Here, you should read these." And I was like. I don't want to read these. This looks stupid. And then I opened it up and I started reading. I'm like, I don't care. This is a freaking phenomenal. It was one of the best comic books um, stories that I, I I was like, this is just such a great story that they had in there. And then when they came out with the Hawkeye series and I'm like, oh my God, they literally are basing it off that comic series. That was so awesome. It was super cool to see. Uh, I think it's really the only good. time I've gotten to like, there's been a comic that I've actually read the comic through that that story was the series or a movie or whatever show. So, yeah, it, I thought it was phenomenal. That and Loki, I, I thought they were both really great. Uh, I I want to see uh, what they're going to do with Deadpool. I'm a little nervous yeah. with that one. I'm um, nervous only because of the writer strike. Yes, exactly. because the whole point Which... of Deadpool is the the one liners and the, you know not the whole point, but a good chunk of it. And since Ryan Reynolds isn't allowed to ad lib because of the writer strike, that takes a lot away from that show. Yes, it does. And and that we'll see. I mean, I, we all anybody who lived through Lost, the show Lost, you remember what that did to that show, right? I mean, when that that what was it? it was Lost? There was two other major shows I think that were on during the writer strike that just went bunk. Excuse me for one moment. All right, turn on the fan in my office. Well, Aiden is stepping away, guys. I want to let you guys uh -huh. know. Oh, that was that was quick. Jesus Christ! How am I supposed to promote that? Get out of here! Get. I'll just... be right back, <laughs> guys. We're gonna have Andy Law on the podcast next Monday. Andy Law does a lot of Warhammer stuff. He wrote the RPGs, miniatures, all kinds of stuff, and uh, he's gonna be joining us for the podcast on Monday. Also, we have a very special tabletop RPG on Saturday. If you like role playing. We're going to have three amazing authors. D&D uh, &D author Eric Scott DeBee. He is a staple uh, guest on this show. Eric Scott DeBee is going to be joining us. He wrote a lot of the West uh, 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 Waterdeep novels. Sorry, brain fart. 
He wrote a lot of the Water Deep novels. He he did the Kickstarter recently, a comic book Kickstarter. Uh, he's just done all kinds of amazing stuff. He's a great friend of mine. He's uh, one of the lead GMs for Dungeon Scrolls. He's going to be joining us. The Pirate Man himself, Chris Jackson, who wrote the Pirates, uh, uh, Pathfinder Tales, Pirates novels. He's written all kinds of other, just a, a, a litany of stories. Shadowrun. Uh, you see the clips all the time. He's done Shadowrun. Um, d and I think he's done a couple D&D, maybe one D&D book. Uh, uh, Warhammer, he's done a Warhammer thing, novel. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Chris Jackson is going to be joining us. My brain is super farting on some of the stuff they work. And of course, the one and only Ed Greenwood, the creator of Forgotten Realms. If you've watched the new D&D movie, that entire world is set in the world that he created. Uh, he's going to be joining us. All three of them are going to be joining us on Saturday for some tabletop role play. I'm a little overwhelmed because I get to role play with these guys. We're going to be playing Mechanical Corners. Mark from Fight in the Box's new tabletop RPG, Mechanical Corners. He's Mark is going to show up and join us once again to GM that gate campaign. So it's going to be ridiculous fun. So you need to be here on Saturday for that. Uh, so join us for that on Saturday. Welcome back, King Aiden. You stepped away there for quite a while, so I just had to keep talking. <laughs> you're, you're good. <laughs> well, you know, my... My my light my fan switch is way over there on the other side of the office. It's like about a foot wall's length. Your my fan house switch. So like you really... flip it and it goes to your OnlyFans page. Is that what the fan switch is? <laughs> Something like that, you know. The filter comes on, the clothes come off, music starts up. It's I mean, I got a few subscribers. <laughs> You have an, What's our uh, next topic? Our next topic is going to be fishing. Epic Realms, I have an author who would be epic. R.L. Stein, who created and wrote the Goosebumps. Yeah, I, you know, that yeah. might be a good idea. Shoot me a... Uh, uh, I'll write it down. R.L. Stein. Yeah, that's a good idea. If you've ever watched any of the stuff where I talk about how I get some of my guests, sometimes some guests are easier to get than others, so I'll have to look and see into, into that. All right. Guys, we are going to move on to our next topic our next topic so i found out if it was last summer i think i found out that you were into fishing because i was i was doing those fishing lure streams do you remember that yep and i was and i was painting fishing lures on stream and i had the the uh the prank bait fishing lures and you sent me a message like oh i didn't know you did this shit i love fishing and we just started chat talking about fishing uh a ton and and I was like, oh, that's really cool. So we should totally talk about fishing. And I posted recently, we were talking about fishing. And I posted my pictures from my trip with uh, Zion uh, this last week, catching fish. We just, we just caught. The first time I got to get out on the boat, um, on, on the boat that we got, we inherited a boat year before last for Thanksgiving. So I remember you telling me about this. And we inherited time. it. Yeah. And then, the, then last year, we basically did all of the things. We got the trailer fix all the lights replaced i brought the the boat motor in because it was a 1964 evanrude 18 horsepower motor uh, i brought that in i had to find a specialist because none of the shops would work on them because it was so old they don't work on stuff that that's that old so i, I found a specialist who worked specifically on older models and i brought it into him and he got that thing freaking working like a charm and so i got the and then when I brought the boat out once last fall just to make sure the motor worked and get it running for the first time. And um, and then, yeah, this this spring, just a couple weeks ago, we brought it out for the first time to actually go fishing, fishing, and we just nailed the fish. It was a great time. I was so, had such a such a good time. What, uh, when's the last time you got out to go fishing? And what were you catching? Uh, last time I went out fishing uh, was for stripers uh bass uh out on lake texcoma uh it was a charter it wasn't very much uh my dad ended up paying for it. it was my brother's birthday present and it was it was pretty fun nothing really big just you know nice little tiny stripers i mean there's a pond in my neighborhood that'll go hit up and they just finished construction so i'll be probably doing that tomorrow <laughs> trying are... to get some crappie so i I'm curious. So I, there's a lot of videos on like YouTube of people fishing and they're always talking about fishing in ponds. To me, a pond doesn't keep fish. Ponds aren't big mm. enough to keep fish. Yeah. And maybe it's because I'm in a place where the pond, where if it's a pond, it freezes to the bottom. So it won't keep fish. 
So maybe that's mm-hmm. just a southern thing. Yeah, it it it's. I mean, I'm not used to. I grew up in Washington, so they're not lakes. You know, they're. It's a deep body of water that they literally dug out just to store fish in. It's pretty funny how they look. I, they're about like half the size of what you'd call a lake. So I call it a pond. They may call it a lake, but it it it's a pond. <laughs> it's tiny compared to what you know, Northwest or Midwest, anything northern. You're used to something that's a little deeper. I mean, Texcoma is a big lake uh, that that's on the border of Texas and Oklahoma. Things massive. You can look it up. You can see it from satellite, no problem. Um, but are you are Most you in Texas? Fish. You're in Texas. No, I'm in you? Oklahoma. You're in Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, Oklahoma City. So smack dab of the state. So Texas isn't that far, and neither is Arkansas or Colorado. Because I know in Texas, so this is a thing that gets me. It drives me nuts. So I, I'm I'm big into invasive species and stuff like that. I like I like to make sure, like I I shoot our house sparrows because they're an invasive species and they kill all of our local birds. And you know, so I get the boat out and like. I go up to the station and I'm like scrubbing. I don't want anything to transfer to the next lake. Mm-hmm. And in Texas, they allow you, allow you to use goldfish as bait. Who who thought that was a good idea? I have no idea. They have a lot. Is that okay in Oklahoma? Can you use goldfish as bait in Oklahoma? Um, I, I, you can use live bait and only in Texas, Oklahoma does not allow live bait unless it's herring, uh, what is it? Leeches and oh, what are those worms called? Nightcrawlers. Night cra- well, then no, the other night there's nightcrawlers, leeches, herring, and some other weird worm they can use down here. Okay. I'll look it up next time I'm there. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> gross. I remember seeing somebody use it. I was like, what the hell is that? uh but yeah i mean i i don't use live bait usually i just do like i said i'm a bass fisherman mostly and crappie somebody's asking uh, something in chat that it's not we'll get back to uh yeah. renfield we'll get back to that question i'll get back to that question here later on we'll we'll get to it in a bit so uh because <laughs> i want to talk about it. i want to talk about it um <laughs> what do you like I, what do you is there something i had this discussion last week week before because my friend he he grew he likes fishing for bass he likes catching bass that's his fish that's his like he gets mm. the biggest thrill from catching bass me Damn. i'm a walleye guy walleye and trout like if i can catch walleye and trout like i that's what i'll go if i have a chance to fish for walleye and trout that's what i'm going to fish for now mm-hmm. the discussion made me realize like he grew up his dad would fish for bass so that's all they fished for growing up. They fished for bass. They fished for bass. That's all they did. I grew up fishing for walleye and trout. And so I loved fishing for walleye and trout because that's, you know, that's what I ate. That's what we ate. We had, What we caught were, guys, people that are upset like you're catching fish and you're whatever. We, were, we weren't rich. We didn't have money. So if you wanted to eat, you caught your food. <laughs> so we... Uh, you know, so we had we had to catch our food to eat. Like, uh, so walleye and trout, we lived on the boundary water. So it was like we'd catch our fill and like all summer long. That's pretty much all we ate was fish. And um, so for me, when I go out fishing, like that's what I'm going for. Don't get me wrong. I love fishing for bass. That's probably third or fourth on my tier. But what about you? Do you do you have a fish that like this is the fish I want to catch? And does it Damn do you it. think it ties into what you grew <laughs> up with? Yeah. I 100% agree because I mean I grew up fishing trout and, and walleye, but we'd go hit the salmon runs, oh. and that that was because you know Pacific Northwest it comes right through the, yeah. the Puget Sound and it's nothing but silvers, coho, kings, chinook. I mean you're just knocking them dead and eating the crap out of them. If I can have a chance, a salmon is something that I'm always a psycho for because I mean who doesn't love salmon for God's sakes? It's amazing. <laughs> Uh, I was the same way we grew up, you know, you, we, we need to bring in food. You know, I had a, a lot of siblings. I grew up big family, four brothers, two sisters. Uh, so hunting and fishing is this primary food source, but yes, yeah, salmon, we would load up those freezers and then we'd start the smoker going and then you just barbecue. You were eating salmon all day in the run. 
Renfield Let's says see. his basic fishing bait was always worms or bread. <laughs> worms, worms were for us. I mean, out for the salmon, we'd always use the rubber squid. They always love the rubber squid. You could do that or a lot of different things. Uh, you know, spooners, just typical spooners. Yeah. And those salmon will come and grovel that up. I think here, um, and I'm sure you understand being a Washington person, what the bait you use depends on the season you have. Oh, yeah. So, like, in early spring, like, very beginning of the year, it's like, for up here, it's like very beginning of the year, if you're going to be going for walleye and, and anything like that, you're doing minnows because that's, you know, that's what they want. That's what they're looking for. And then when the when the leeches hatch out on the lakes, then you start using leeches. So, like, right now, if I'm going out fishing, I'm going to go out with leeches. I'm not going to go out with worms. I'm, I might have some minnows, but I generally probably wouldn't. And then when you start getting into your late, your, your, your midsummer to late fall, that's when the worms will start kicking in. You can kind of use the other ones as well, but that's kind of when you start nailing the worms. And I've noticed that that's definitely a seasonal thing, unless you're, yeah, you know, you're something right. that'll, some fish will eat anything, you know, you, you want to get your, yeah. your perch and your sunfish and all of that, your crappie, you can fish with whatever live bait you want and they'll <laughs> eat it. <laughs> Not even necessarily live, those <laughs> perch right. will go over anything. Yeah, uh, with the salmon, you're right, because we use eggs during during the spawn when they're going upriver. Yeah. You'll, you'll switch to a, uh, salmon row and you'll put that and float it down and they'll gobble that up. Because oh, wow, I never thought about that. Yeah, because they're they 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 know that's what's coming down river, right? They're all spawn and they're dropping their eggs, so they're ready to grab an unfertilized egg and launch on it as it goes strolling past them. So, oh, wow. do they make yeah. fake like fake artificial? Because I know they make artificial yeah. worms and artificial minnows. They and... have real ones too. They you know they have the real you know salmon eggs, the nice little red ones. Put them on the hook, go for it. Gummy bears? No, he's not lying. <laughs> I was in Washington. Say Washington, they will. They, it looks like eggs, so they'll they'll eat the gummy bear. Yeah, I've seen people fish with them there. Um, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, my my go to fish will always be salmon, and you're 100. percent That comes what I do. They have salmon my in neck, Oklahoma. No. <laughs> so what's your go to fish in Oklahoma? Trout, because wow. you know, we opening day of trout fishing when I was a little kid, we'd go out, and in Washington, it was huge when opening day it was. You'd be out and there would be, you know, this family that would be rowing, uh, you know, their boat selling coffee and donuts to all the fishermen on opening day, you know, and the, the lake was always packed and the, the cars are just going in and out, you know, and then, and that changed. I remember from a kid to growing up that it just, for some reason, America's interest in fishing just kind of. The not, if, you live up in Minnesota, if you live in Minnesota, that's not. You need yeah. to take a trip up here. We need to go fishing together. Well, that would be awesome. Take, a, take a plane I... trip up here, and we can go up to where, you know, we're the land of 10,000 lakes. I mean, come on. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. I yeah, I, I will not. I will take you up on that offer. <laughs> yeah. I Do it. What's that? Uh, out of fake, fake lures, what's what's what are your, what's some of your fake lures that you really like using? That you like using, uh, not frost. necessarily whether they're successful or not. Frogs. I love using frogs. Yeah. Because you know, mimic the actual movement of a frog. That that the reason I do a lot of bass fishing down here is it's not like the salmon here. Are not like I don't want to eat the salmon out of their lakes unless their lakes are big enough, right? Like a lot of their lakes, I'm like, this is bond, <laughs> you know, in comparison to watching did. So maybe I'm a little snobby, but a lot of ours are river fed right yeah. in washington most of our lakes are river fed or, or or pretty decent stream the waters are coming off the glaciers here there's a lot of man-made lakes and stuff like that and they're still coming off the streams and rivers but they're muddy catfish is huge for people down here you know there's just not a lot of uh clear water natural filtration so yeah yeah do you uh have you ever had catfish uh yeah i've had catfish down here um not a big fan. Not a big fan. We have we have a place up here that they have a fried catfish, and every time we get it, it's like God, I forgot how good this is. And then we're yeah. like, "You want to catch fried catfish?" I'm like, "No, I'll just come to the restaurant and have it." <laughs> <laughs> My father in law cool. loves loves catching catfish. Like he like because he's a he's a big catch and release guy. He doesn't like the taste of fish, um, but he's mm. a big catch and release guy. So he's just like, "Yeah, catch catfish." It's his uh, his dad got us the boat. 
And so, yeah, he's, there's nobody who knows more about fishing that I know of right now than him. It's, it's crazy. I feel that. So there's this big show right now that I think you've heard of it. This guy does fishing and shows a big giant fish that attacked people. And he had a pool of piranha fish and he cut his leg and there was no movement. But when he put a dead cooked chicken covered with blood in the fish went on a frenzy. True story. Yeah, uh, River Monsters. River yeah, Monsters is one of them. That yeah. I, that's the first one I think of. Yeah, yeah. River Monsters. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. I like. I I enjoyed watching River Monsters. Uh, I mostly enjoy watching River Monsters, mostly just to see what he does. Like, <laughs> what just, is he? What, what what is he using? Where is he going? What's the you know? What's his plan? Because you know you you're doing a show where you have to catch this thing, and you're going into a place you've never been before. So you mm. have to like you have to ask the locals like that. That's an old old trick is to find out what the locals do, where they go. When you're in a new place, you have to kind of scope out the fishing area. You know, you go yeah. up and down. The, one of the tricks my dad used to teach me is if you're in a new area and you're shore fishing, first thing you do is you leave all your shit at home and you go to where you want to go fishing, and then you walk the shoreline, and you look for evidence. Is there is there litter is there cans of shit laying around is there little like worm buckets like the empty styrofoam buckets do you see fishing line and trees like if you see that you know somebody's fishing there if a local is fishing there then that's a place where you can catch fish mm. yeah so yeah, if you, you know and then if you find people you just walk up you're like hey how's the fishing going because i've noticed you know more often than not if you find somebody fishing and you chat to them about fishing they will yeah. brag Fishermen like to brag, and that means that they will also be very inclined to tell you what they're using, where they're using, and where to go. Not always, yep. but most of the time. Yeah, and washing in the river is doing the salmon runs. You can you can get so much information wash walking that riverbank. Of course, finding a spot's going to be difficult. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the middle of the Amazon jungle looking for the the tooth, the three tooth panamberdon fish or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> he cracks me up on those i love watching him and like you said i want to look at what he does i want to see you know i mean it's funny because it's almost all what a fisherman do would i use a big lure or will i use a tiny lure <laughs> it's like okay well we'll see are you bottom surface mid i mean yeah he, it's fun to listen to him a lot of people that don't fish they don't realize like the detail they're like yeah gotta grab a fishing rod grab a reel and whatever fucking lure and throw it in the water no good luck no <laughs> no they're like well yeah i'll grab that little minnow one. It's like you have the crankbait yeah well is it a deep diver is it a middle diver do you need to put sinkers on there how deep of water are you fishing in are you fishing from what's shore? the temperature outside boat? what's the temperature yeah. outside yeah. what time of year is it what are you fishing yeah, what... for what was last week looking like? Oh, yeah. it was cloudy. Oh, well, so the water hasn't warmed up yet. Damn. Well, it's a 90 degree day out yet, but if the water's not warming up, the fish probably are not going to be very active, you know, right. or they depends, depends on which fish you're going for. Like you said, season, are they spawning? Are they not spawning? There's so much that goes. Into there is so much that you don't think of. And so I'm always like my father-in-law, he's always, I'm always asking him questions because my dad growing up, my dad, like, he was a guide. So do you know who Babe Winkleman is? Mm. Back in Sounds the 80s. Familiar. Back in the 80s, he uh -huh. was a TV show guy. He was like the biggest fishing TV show out there was Babe Winkleman. And every time he came up to Lake Vermilion, his scouts would go to my dad and be like, hey, where, where, where's the spots for this time? And my dad would be like, here, let me take you. And he'd take them there. We ran the portage between Lake Vermilion and Trout Lake. So my dad knew his shit. The problem was, is he and I have been like, once I hit about middle school high school range we kind of had a little separation and i forgot most of the shit that i had learned um and i kind of fishing had kind of dropped off a little bit for i still loved it i just didn't ever do it because i didn't have the opportunity and mm. then you know he and i started to connect again and then he passed ended up passing away and so like my father-in-law really rem like i get that from him so i'm really i'm always asking him questions and i was trying to relearn things that i forgot or learn things that i just never knew so 
Yeah. And I mean, uh, I, I, I do actually remember Bob Winkleman at least seeing his uh, uh, TV show, at least. I searched him up yeah. there and I was like, that basement looks familiar. <laughs> I was like, I, I do remember, because I used to watch a bunch of fishing shows back when, you know, there was only, what, like four channels before right. the bajillion, you know. Just went back because we're old, because we're old. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, but, you know, or maybe the time's just gotten so much faster and technology's changing constantly. Do you watch any, uh, any like, because there's people who stream fishing on Twitch. Do you watch any of them? No. Uh, most of the time, I, I, I get upset. If I start watching fishing stuff, I just want to go fishing all the time. And so I try to control that impulse because, like, you know, uh, got to have other responsibilities. Right. <laughs> See, yeah. that's why I do the pond here in the in the neighborhood because I'm like, okay, I can't go out to a lake today. But I mean, I will I will start going out here pretty soon. Uh, my brother is a way more of a fisherman than me. He, my older brother, he goes out like almost. You know, I mean, he doesn't have kids, so he's always going out, <laughs> and he rubs that in. I don't have a kid, so I'm going out fishing. Right, like, nice. <laughs> I hate you. There's but, a. Yeah, um... he... go, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, there's a guy named Fuzz. I just did a shout out. P-H-U-Z. He's a streamer. Uh, he was one of the first mm. streamers that I actually started watching on Twitch. And he originally, he did he did uh, jig tying. He would build make jigs. Mm. And that was like his main stream. And now he tours the world streaming. And he, fi- he, he goes out to eat and he goes fishing. That's what his stream is. Oh, um, and I saw him when he was just, when he was just, you know, the same size streams we, we are. And he was, you know, he was you know five five hundred followers or whatever and he was just tying jigs and doing you know some cooking streams and going fishing and now he's i think he was just in the uk he was over in thailand he's stream fishing in all 50 states he's the only streamer on twitch to ever stream at all 50 states fishing so i was like it was just so cool to watch him grow and uh and get up there phuz is his stream he used to be called fuzzy but there, there had to be an underscore after his name, and they, they wouldn't let him have it without it, so he just changed it to Fuzz. <laughs> nice. I'll have to check him out. Yeah. That sounds cool. There's a fish that I think was around in the dinosaur era. The fish is the Megalodon, the biggest shark ever. Yeah. Mm. Megalodons. There's rumors, you know, we might be talking about some paranormal stuff here a little later. Are you a... Are you a th- person that thinks that the megalodon still exists because there's rumors that they think that it's still out there i mean uh, i uh, i uh, as a scientist uh, as somebody who thinks of himself as a scientist i can't say no i would say that i think it's unlikely but i can't say no i mean like, there could be plenty of places where it could could be at we don't know hardly crap of the ocean i just think as something that uh enor- uh, enormous you you see a little more evidence more modern than what we see but possibly i couldn't say no i mean just like any of the uh the paranormal stuff somebody says they've seen it i don't know if there's been any modern sightings of the megalodon has there been is that, that why people are expect oh, okay see if somebody said like i know the, the giant, giant squid, squid they've seen sightings of it now lately the last couple of years yeah. they've been finding tons of the giant squid that's supposed to have been extinct yeah they have found a wash up in europe they've they have an actual carcass uh japan actually caught them live with a deep camera attacking oh, wow. a, a giant lure they set out Oh wow! And yeah, so the the giant squid is is no longer myth. That is actually proven fact. Uh, megalodon. I mean, yeah, they could be. I mean, I, like I said, it would be interesting to see like a sperm whale or blue whale wash up with bite marks. Yeah. That could only be because that's that's the only thing I think that would you know, or somebody who who was credible said they seen it. Like, you know, through that topic rather yes. quickly didn't we no uh, fishing you can always talk about fishing <laughs> what have you I been saltwater fishing oh yeah that mo- most of the salmon uh was like you said was out in the sound and then uh we'd go do halibut every once in a while which have was you done uh, anything British like Columbia. gone fishing for like the big shit the really big stuff like a uh, swordfish uh, or anything like that um 
in Hawaii, I caught an Ono, which was pretty big. Uh, I mean, it was whatever you could hook up on, but yeah, I ended up getting a pretty big Ono, probably about four, four feet, Holy five shit. inches. Nice. Yeah, it was, it was probably the biggest, the longest thing I ever caught. My brother, we were out on the Kalimba River. He got a sixteen foot long sturgeon. Nice on the river. Our, Those things are yeah, monsters. We're gonna be unprofessional here for a second. I don't know if you've seen this, but let me blur my background. Let me check check that out. Oh, 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 oh that's yeah, a that's a northern boy. right there, buddy. Uh, I wish. We call I that Jake. That's somebody. that's Jake. Oh, my gosh. That's a gorgeous beauty. That, um, yeah, I, pike or something I'd love to go fishing for. So Jake, Not any pike in Washington. Uh -oh. <laughs> Tiger musky. So Jake is our... Um, do you want to hear the story about Jake? Well, we have to have the story about Jake. You can't show Jake and then not tell the story about Jake. So Jake was... So I was talking about my dad. Um, my technically stepdad, but we lived on the boundary waters. And one year we had to, st we stayed over winter in a cabin and we literally had plastic sheets dropped down over all the rooms, except for the room with our space heater one winter. Now keep in mind, way Northern Minnesota, like negative 20, 30 degrees. Oh yeah. And we were living off of a space heater. So it was bad, but he'd go out ice fishing every year. So he was ice fishing for walleye because we needed it for food. And so we had a little tiny hook, hole for walleye, this big, no house, no fish house, nothing. And he catches that. He, he was reeling it in and he had to, ch he was trying to keep the line taut while he was chipping ice away because it wouldn't fit through the hole. Fit through the hole. Oh my God. And he was able to pull it in. <laughs> so I remember very distinctly, my mom was sleeping on the floor because we were poor. I, I established this. <laughs> She was sleeping in the floor on her sleeping bags. And I was up on the one little short couch we had, because that's where I often slept. Mm -hmm. And I was up there playing. I had a Snoopy video, handheld video game. It was this big. This it looked like an arcade. <laughs> um, it ran off of four double D batteries or four D-sized batteries. And it would last a couple <laughs> hours. So I'm sitting there playing that, and my dad comes in. And my eyes, I'm like, holy crap. And she's still asleep. And he walks in covered in snow, just frost, cigarette hanging out of his mouth. He says, well, Ma, they're getting bigger and throws it on the floor in front of her. Oh, she opens her God. eyes like, what? And she just sees this close. She sees this giant Ma doing this. Uh, she jumps to her feet. She's like, get that goddamn thing out of here. She's screaming the top of her. Uh, it scared the crap out of her. Um, <laughs> he ended up making the news on that because that was the, uh, at the time, that was the lake record for, for ice fishing. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, so that's it was cool. A 20, 25, 25 pound northern. You know, again, this is early 80s, so they had only been recording for so long. Um, long since been broke easily. But yeah, he's a 25 pound northern on there. He was made it in like all kinds of newspapers. They kept it to get it uh, uh, taxidermy. taxidermy. They brought it to this local taxidermy. The local taxidermist sold it to an outfitter company he taxidermied it and sold it behind our back oh we lost it we don't know what happened to it well we found there was a touring show a show that was touring and we my mom saw it and was like that's our fish and she brought all the paperwork and so then my mom and dad sued the taxidermy company the because company, the, out, the, 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 sh the show that was touring, doing like outdoor tours, they sued the taxidermy company. Needless oh to say, that God. taxidermy company was no longer existent. We got the fish back. We put a new plate on it called, called Jake. And yeah, and then a handful of years later, not a handful of years, because that thing, that was 1984. That fish is that old. And uh, it came into my care. And it was, it had a couple beat up spots. So I brought it to a local taxidermy and I just wanted them to fix it. And it was very nicotine stained because both of my parents were really bad smokers. It's like, I want it cleaned and I want it, the paint touched up, but don't change anything. Of course, they added all these spots and it looked like they just took an airbrush and like, psh, 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 
Yeah, I'm like, I, to... I have an airbrush and I could have done a better job. And not only yeah. that, like, it just looks so bad. So, I, like, I try not to look super closely at it because it pisses me off. And that taxidermy company has since gone out of business. So, taxidermy, like, people who take it seriously, it, it's it's worth it when you find somebody who's good. But, but yeah, that's the story of Jake. And uh, Jake is a, uh, a family heirloom at this point. So, <laughs> That's freaking cool, man. I like that. That's awesome. I did catch a 19-pound northern. I think that's the biggest fish I caught was like a 19-pound. Well, it wasn't too much smaller than this one. So Big, Biggest I've ever caught poundage-wise was probably, uh, what I want to say, 55-pound halibut. It wasn't that Oni or whatever you caught? Mm -mm. No, no. It was no, he was, it was a big old flat halibut and halibut are long flat fish in there that that's but i mean there it wasn't very big like well, you're also ocean fish. what about freshwater yeah. fish? what's your biggest freshwater fish oh freshwater fish i don't know maybe uh probably like a 10 pound bass <laughs> <laughs> never really caught anything big freshwater nice Renfield says, my yep. theory is that when Stephen Hawking said that the water pressure is like a flat surface, and now that the surface is changing stuff, that it was extinct, or myth is coming up as the Earth is changing, and it's a true fact. Okay. Okay. Right. I mean, you know, uh, waves and stuff like that, isn't that something that they've talked about for... Um... Uh, Loch Ness, they're saying there's a lot of quartz at the bottom of the lake, and uh, due to vibrations and everything like that, it could be a, a distortion that, that makes things appear. Yeah. Do you think uh, Loch Ness is a real thing? The Loch Ness monster? There's been way too many sightings, whether it's eels or something like that, then, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a perf person who'd like to think it's uh what are the dinosaur a plecto, uh, plecto whatever plectosaurus plectus minimus minimus and, and know, my theory drink is epic. that's better way to do it have another drink that way we don't have to i, I wouldn't be able to pronounce it um I'll have another but drink. i know you're in the right ballpark with that but yeah my my theory with Loch Ness is that it is uh has to do something with either time distortion and so you're seeing something in the past, uh, and 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 that's the only way I can kind of explain the anomalies and not picking it up. Uh, I think that actually occurs a lot more in this world than we think. Yeah, like Skinwalker. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you if you go to the the spaghetti string theory, like uh, first off, you're all anomalous uh, anomalous improbabilities, right? Like the fact that there would be another epic realms in the multiverse from genetic improbabilities. First off, you know, your, your genes have to line up for when your parents conceived. Secondly, their genes had to match up for it, right? With whatever dominant characteristics that they had. Otherwise you'd look vastly different, right? But maybe they had more brown hair or, or some other, you know, you know, green eye color or, or gray or whatever, you know, genetic differences that that would end up being dominant at the time of conceptions throughout your gene pool which goes back you know hundreds of thousands and millions of years and, and every reality has a similar epic in it that yeah. that seems quite improbable uh so you are all mathematical improbabilities if you go on the conception of the multiverse but that's why i always have a problem with string theory when they're talking about the conceptual like you sneeze like you and me sneeze and we enter another reality and it's so similar to this reality we don't even notice it right so then when epic realms goes to work tomorrow and he does something so uncharacteristic something so diverse to his character and what all the decisions epic realms takes in every multiverse he does something so Acute. like you're just like i'm gonna crash my car into a mcdonald's just randomly for some reason that sparks it and then you end up in a different reality so obtuse to every other decision that was made by epic realms and a plenitude of of different multiverses that now you start seeing monsters in the reality you go to right 
or Planet of the Apes style or whatever, you know, some completely different. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't can't subscribe to that so much. So like I said, I time slips, I think, is more more something that I, I can see is believable. Yeah. You know, uh, that, you know, I like the multiverse theory. I, I, honestly, I do. I do. I honestly think that there is. I think that there is multiple versions. I mean, that's the, the Mandela effect is to me, the Mandela effect is proof. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, we, we're talking, if we're talking scientific theory, obviously Mandela effect isn't proof, but to me, like mentally what I've seen and what I've experienced, like the Mandela effect, like there are things that these, this is, this is what it is. And when 30, when 5 million people all go, yeah, born, born in the USA, the cover of the album is Bruce Springsteen's ass with a red bandana hanging out. And now everybody's like, no, it's a red baseball cap. What? Uh, wow. Huh. You know, or I mean, the, the Berenstein Bears and the Berenstain Bears and, you know, uh, the, the Coca-Cola with the squiggle, but the squiggle yeah. never existed. It's just a little dash. Yeah. And you go yeah. into it like, I'm always like, you got to look at it and go, okay, is it a branding change? Or if you go to an antique stop shop and look at the old ones, is it changed? Yeah. I mean, and, and that's, and I, I can't argue against that, you know, like the subtle changes that are significant enough that, you know, somehow we've converged realities. And so you're on a conveyance point, but it's so subtle and so minutely indifferent that it doesn't really particularly matter. I, I don't know. I mean, like I said, do you, you and me go back into time, right? Einstein always believed that there would be something that would prevent you from killing your grandparents. Right. You couldn't go back and kill your grandparents since because then the whole, you know, paradox. Right. right. So which I dimensionality agree. could 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 solve that. Right. So Evergrums is like, I got to go back in time and save humanity from this catastrophic event that's going to happen. And he goes back in time. And as soon as he goes back in time, he's in a different dimension. So whatever he was trying to prevent may never even be an occur because once again, anything that occurs is a mathematical improbability that, you know, a fly on the moon of Vega was flopping its wings in a counterclockwise motion when the planet hit a catastrophic impact. And that minute force from the blast off of this rock hitting that butterfly spirals it to a 45 degree angle as it leaves the planet and it hurls through the cosmos for several billion years and then it comes cascading down and hits earth well that butterfly and the reality that epic jumped to wasn't flying that day it ended up getting eaten by a hawk that decided to leave its nest a little earlier because there was a change in pressure underneath it you know yeah. and there's so many things that line up and you're like okay so that's where i always struggle with it like you said the mandela effect to me that's like okay is that really proof of the multiverse or is that proof of conscious shift you know which is also i guess you know is is the reality of something something because that's what we wish reality to be yeah you know a simulation are we in a fucking simulation <laughs> that was another topic we should have had this mandela effect is <laughs> another topic it's a good one it's a good one I, did uh... he die in prison or right. did he get out Right, right, no. did he? I, I always thought, um, what I always saw is that the Mandela effect was when you die. So there's dying of old age, and then there's dying when you're not supposed to. And yeah. so anytime you have a near-death experience, uh, in one existence, you actually died. And that's what hopped you. So for me, for me, I didn't notice, like, I heard of the Mandela effect. I never noticed any of it until there was a point... I was driving and I hit a patch of ice and I swerved like my whole vehicle spun and a semi flew by me and just barely missed me. The next day I noticed my first Mandela effect and I was like, mm. shit, did I die yesterday? Did I literally die yesterday? And I'm like, I, but in this world I survived and now my conscience is here and I'm noticing the shit. Yeah, possibly. I mean, this this is the thing that that would be interesting to go because then, you know, oh man, I didn't sleep well last night. Did you die? Maybe you had sleep apnea. 
if for some reason your 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 instincts were just enough or your wife patted you on the chest started breathing boom and so you didn't even notice it you died in the middle of your sleep because of sleep apnea <laughs> wow. like you said there, well, there's ever a number of things like you go get a, a shot. And the nurse doesn't get enough air bubbles out. So air bubble goes from the injection site up into your heart and you know, all of a sudden you're dead, you know, and your brain. I mean, there's so many subtle things that could cause a person to die. <laughs> that would be fascinating if we're all of a sudden, like you said, if you start running through so many iterations, so the guy who lives insanely, recklessly, is he just burning through his lives so quickly? So until yeah. that accident. Mm, yeah, that, my, that my thought is that my thought is that that's what happens. Like you have all these lives, the multiverse. Say there's, say there's a, say there's for simplicity's sake, say there's twenty of them. So yeah. you have twenty near death experiences, and you just keep bouncing until you hit that last one. And usually it's you die of old age is usually the last one. And that's why you have all of the things. But that's just a thought. My, my, going back before we continue, we, you talked about the time travel thing. Here's always been my thought of time travel. Because time travel, if you, if you look at it as the theoretical you know, plane of whatever, if you go back in time and change it, then it would have been changed before you went back in time. Yes. So there wouldn't be something for you to change. So either you're the one that caused it or you can't actually fix it. So and to that's me, only you if can't go assuming... back in time and change it because otherwise you're it would have already been changed. It would have already happened. That's the same thing with the dimensionality because you're talking about a linear plane. You wouldn't be able to do a linear plane. So you'd only you'd have to go to a different place in a different time and whatever you're trying to change may or may not even exist in that, that realm yeah. of probability. Or you it change most likely it and it makes a new universe and you go back to your normal time and nothing's changed. It, assuming that you'd have that power, right? right? Or that these realities don't exist regardless of it the decision where where epic decides to build a time machine and go back into a, to a reality could be in a you know like you said as soon as you've made that decision to do that that is something that would already be committed into the membrane of what the multiverse is and so you using that device <laughs> versus somebody who didn't use that device would also be part of it like see this is an argument i actually had with uh this um individual about uh climate change right and, and not to get political or anything i'm not going to go down that route all i'm saying is he was sitting there going but we're part of the environment so aren't what we doing maybe a natural process and i was a little, you know i had a lot of arguments against that so that's what i said i'm not trying to get into it but it, it, it is an interesting he's like Listen, hold on i need a drink after that <laughs> i mean it's one of those discussions where you're like okay now we got to go down this whole whole rabbit hole where we're talking about well what is it what is it like the beaver who makes his house and it floods and destroys a human's house down the way that's not intent the beaver's changing its environment to more suit its condition and so it's still altering and and more in a beneficial way than the human who built its house probably down in the floodplain anyway yeah. <laughs> Forgot what it was to exist in nature. So when we buy a house, it's not like, you know, you've been there for three or four winters homesteading it. So you understand what's going to happen every spring or every fall. You're literally like, ah, oh, this house is built. I'm going to buy it on this plot of land. So it, it is fascinating. But that argument, I think, is 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 moot. So like I said, if you you were planning on building a time machine and committed yourself to that, that would be ensued into the multiverse. Yeah. Which would be insane. <laughs> All right. For those that are watching, I think it's break time. We've gone through our first two topics. We've got the next topic, which might be a lot longer than 20 minutes. We'll see what happens. It's the NASA report on UFOs, UAPs, uh, which they call UAPs, not the same thing the government calls UAPs, which what the fuck. Make up your minds, world. <laughs> they don't want it to be easy <laughs> they don't want it to be easy the same acronym different words so guys we will be back in just a little bit after that we have potluck where uh who knows what we're going to talk about we'll see so we'll be right back in just a little bit uh get up stretch your legs use the restroom i'm going to also run an ad while we go on break we will see you guys in just a few minutes <laughs> Hey everybody, we are back. I am joined by the one and only King Aiden. 
four or IV. If you if you need an IV drip, where you want to go. <laughs> if you need an IV drip, then it's King Biden IV or it's four in room and number old. Why why the uh, why the four? I have so this goes back to playing World of Warcraft, and and my buddy was like, oh, was like some jerk off took my name on one server because it was Iden Hall. He's like, oh, I just put King Iden IV. I was like, so it's supposed to be IV. But uh, yeah, I was like, okay. And so I was right. It is IV. It's not four. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He was the one who said, put IV. I was like, you mean four? <laughs> King Iden the fourth. I used to have that. Now it's just, yep, King Iden IV. Do you still play it makes World no Warcraft? Rhyme reason. Do you still play World of Warcraft? No, I, um, I went to rehab. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I quit after that. You know, really you know, Bentley King. plays World of Warcraft too, right? Yes, I I I I love that game, and and I just I I can't be responsible and play that game, so I don't. If so, I haven't played it since like the Lich King. If I yep, got that if, if, if I got the game and played it, would you come back and play with me? Uh oh, oh man. Uh, if we're only doing it for a short time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like forever. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I mean, I say yeah, a short time, but you know, I'm like forever. I mean, everybody. <laughs> I'm I'm moving my chair in like six weeks. That, that game, <laughs> that game will kill me. I I was really fat playing that, and uh, I, I mean, I, I I it was fun. What about other MMOs? Have you played other MMOs, EverQuest, or anything like that? Um, no, I mean, I, I am jumping on, I, I played Diablo, but that's not really a, um, MMO. Have you um, played the, the Adventure Quest 3D game? Mm, Speaking of Bentley? No, that sounds fun though. A week, a week from tomorrow, I'm going to be going back to Adventure Quest 3D and, uh, and Bentley's going to be joining me. We're going to be co-streaming next Tuesday, a week from oh Tuesday. So that'll be, sounds, I, I will watch that one. <laughs> you should definitely join us, uh, whether it's on Bentley stream or on mine or on both, cause you can lurk on both of us. Uh, but definitely it's, it's, I think it'll be fun. I loved Adventure Quest 3D, but I, I have a issue where it's like, if I don't have people to play with, it's not as much fun. I'm the same way. But if I, I Bentley really starts do. playing it, and of course, if like we decide, because I, I last time I played it was when I first started streaming, and so maybe now like because it's free, it's a free game, it doesn't cost anything, and so oh. yeah, it's, you just get it on Steam and you can just hop on in and play, and the graphics are pretty good and it's fun, and so yeah, if you want to play, hop on in and try it out, and then maybe we'll we can get a full, maybe we can make a whole guild or something, and we can all be obsessed together. <laughs> here's the cool thing you you only get one character but you can change mm -hmm. classes anytime you want because oh, each class cool. you levels up so if you switch like i'm playing a paladin it's like okay well i'm level eight in paladin i'm gonna switch to switch to pirate great you get four levels of pirate oh, i want to go back to paladin you don't start over at paladin you just pick up where you left off Oh, so it's kind of just making one character, but he can be proficient in everything. Yeah, and then that's you just like cool. go into your bank and it's like, okay, I swap out my gear to have my paladin gear, and that's it. That's it. Yeah, it's and you only get like four or five different like attack power th type things. So yeah, it's 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 pretty simple, but it's also a lot of fun. That sounds cool. Yeah, definitely. Should. I'd have to check. Join. So yeah, guys, those are watching next week. Doing a is it next week or is it tomorrow? Oh. It might be tomorrow. It's tomorrow. <laughs> oh my god. Tomorrow. Like, yeah, tomorrow I am co-streaming with Bentley. I knew that too. I was like, oh. that's not next week. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow I am co-streaming with Bentley. <laughs> we are doing uh, uh, Adventure Quest 3D tomorrow right here on uh, on my stream and also on Bentley's stream. So join us tomorrow. Tomorrow. God. See? Alcohol. I will definitely be watching tomorrow. Awesome. Well, we'll see you there and hopefully some of the other people there. Our next subject, let me start the let me start the timer. Our next subject. Give us a rundown. So so we all know that there was this the government put out a report on yes. the UFO thing. And it was pretty much was like we don't know shit. It's not yeah. us. Oh no, yeah. they didn't say it's not us. They said we know it's not other organ, other other countries in the world. Whatever we're seeing, all this phenomena we're seeing, is not, is not, not by not. other countries, and that's basically all they said. Yeah. Um. And some people are like, that's just their way of saying it's us. 
Like, mm-hmm. this is our shit yeah. that you're seeing, which we know is bullshit because we've been seeing it for years. Um, well, because if they did have that technology, like I said, this is the Dr. Stephen Greer's argument. If we have this technology, then there's a gross crime against humanity because it's zero point energy, which would be allowed to like the amount of quantities of energy that would be uh, used to power such a device could power pretty much the world. Right. So if you have that, then you are literally just screwing up the earth when you could be using the power source like that and so that's where some people say well this is proof they don't have it because if they had that technology where they would be high where would they be hiding it well if any of you grew up in the 80s through the 90s you know plenty of places where they can hide it the united states has been building dumbs for a long time deep underground military bases um roswell is pretty much all that area 51 i mean if you look at the satellite image before they started blurring it and all the photos it looks like just a damn hangar and a runway in the middle of nowhere. And yet everybody who's been there is like, no, there's like four or five different layers. The mountainsides open up to be hangars as well, which makes sense because why the hell wouldn't you? Right. You know? So, I mean, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I'm very skeptical. Uh, NASA. So, I was so that was say, the what government is the, report. What is the difference between the U S government report and you, because you mentioned to me the NASA, re- I don't know anything about the NASA report. So what okay. is the difference between the two reports? Are they related so, or are they not related? So the government sat there and so Congress said, okay, so the DOD says they don't know shit. NASA, what do you know? And NASA goes, we don't know anything, but we'll set up a group to research this. So then they showed a bunch of videos and said, yeah, we found these orbs all around the world. We don't know what the hell they are. And they're like, okay, that's funny. Cause I have an insider here who worked there 20 years ago. Has come forth and said you had them airbrushing out photos. Yeah. I have this one over here saying this. I have this. I have this evidence, you know, and NASA's just like, oh, well, I don't know where you got that. Same thing with the DOD did, right? right. We had a bunch of ex military people. Now another guy's come on board. He's got 15 years' experience in the military, and he's saying we have a UFO from another planet, a non terrestrial. Yep. Uh, flying saucer or whatever you want to go that was recovered in 1933 Italy this is the government not NASA this is the government this is a former I think CIA still kind of some of his stuff it's getting vetted out right now but you're you're, you're sitting there going because both sides guys I don't care where you sit on this political spectrum both political parties have been literally senators from both parties have been irate about this Going, okay, we know because whistleblowers are coming to them. Yeah. You know, and telling them all this stuff. And they're going, this is BS. All right. You guys are lying to us. So once again, you don't know what game's really being played at and where we sit and all of it. Who's saying what? Who's not? Is there a smoking man from X Files who controls it all? (laughs) I mean, right? I mean, he Chris Carter, if you guys look. He was supposed to keep carrying on with the X-Files series. Uh, David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson both had interest in carrying on with the show. He does a season about a vaccine, all this fake alien invasion by the government and everything like that. And suddenly now he's pulled off the air. Yeah. You know, and you go, and and he was arrested and asked about sources. Yeah. How do you know about all the shit that you know about? It's like, yes, exactly. We're just making shit up based on what makes sense. Common yeah, sense, you know, common sense. Well, there is people who've been on his sets and stuff like that that say he's talking to somebody. Um, he has somebody who's been leaking him information. There's way too much shit. He's gotten way too close to the mark to say. I used to have this he... theory. I used to have this theory that the movies, movies and television show and popular culture was a way of throwing yes. the common person off the scent. Like, yes. you know, so when it's like, Oh, I I was visited, you know, if somebody says I was visited by men in black, oh, like Will Smith. No, that's where it is. It's like, because then they reference the pop culture and then it becomes a joke and it's not serious. Exactly. When there really is, when there really are people that are the men in black, which have been documented multiple times where they just, you know, they're supposed to be, they show up, they're really creepy. They don't have any personality. They act weird, yeah. Yeah, and they They're act weird. weird. Mm-hmm. And there's just something about them that makes people feel 
uncomfortable with them being around. Yeah. Yeah. And the FBI have admitted to doing that, to going in and being acting psychologically different. They were conditioned. So I'm not going to, we're going to go down a rabbit hole. Rabbit Uh, hole. (laughs) So much for the NASA report. Let's just talk. We're just talking UFOs. Here we go. It does connect to some degree. And like you said, all this is not, none of it's, a, a person, Chris Carter, like you said, he, he says here, a, a person can make these giant assumptions. We, they call us conspiracy theories because it's a good way of discrediting us, right? I think that's kind of what's going on nowadays is they got all these political guys who are whistleblowers and stuff. And so they're they're trying to lead the populace to this mad societal hate each other F fest where the reality of the situation is they're trying to cover up what's really going on. And that we might be sitting at a a close proximity to an intergalactic war with an extraterrestrial species because your government's probably done things it shouldn't have done out there. And then they don't want to come clean about it until they're absolutely blowing the shit out of you. Or Chris Carter's right. And they're like, hey, we're keeping aliens away because we want to we want to go into space how our government dictates to go into space. And we want to control humanity when we take that step. I mean, it, it, it's an insane reality or, or outer limits theory. All everybody in government's an alien and they want us to kill ourselves because they know they can't directly get into a conflict because other aliens might stop them. But if humans start killing each other, well, they, you know, nuclear war, we, they nuke the shit out of themselves. It's okay. Chalk them off the, the, the board and. We'll start again on Earth. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> you know? think it's that one. I think it's more of the other. What about the whole, like, we were talking about it earlier, interdimensional. You know, what if what if they aren't from another planet, per se? What if they are interdimensional? That could also explain why they're so interested. They're like, these idiots are going to start nuking each other again, and that fucks up us. Right? I mean, when an atom bomb goes huh? The amount of energy of splitting an atom and that atom exists within the multiverse. So when you split it here, you may be splitting it in other realities and causing another reaction there one way or another, positive or benefit or negative. That if, yeah, you were in another dimension, you'd be like, what the F are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) Are you idiots are going to do this again? Like, I mean, uh, you know... This is something, the the ancient Earth theory, right? Like, how many sentient species is Earth housed? We we would say one out of our arrogance. We're the only ones. There's never been any other intelligent species on this planet besides us. And dolphins. Yet you, and dolphins. <laughs> and what, what else could there have been? I mean, you, you don't know. You're literally talking about 4.6 billion years, and you're, you're telling me you have it all sorted out. The fossil record doesn't even cover nearly... Half of what this planet is is in existence, and even the stuff we have is not enough to really dictate a lot of different paths of evolution on this planet, right? Mm-hmm. They say, oh, this will just, but no, it still has not. Darwin's doubt. Read it. Darwin wrote it himself. It's in his own words. Where the hell is the fossil record to, to substantiate all this? And and I'm not, I'm not going down a complete, you know, um, uh, sidetrack of, of of where it is but all i'm saying is in other dimensions it, it, we talk about a mathematical improbability that there would be another epic realms that looks exactly like you right now think of one where uh, asteroid never hit the planet right how much more advanced could a civilization let's say let's say if an last, asteroid hit the planet let's say rome ne- rome never fell let's say that never happened. right yeah what would what would the world or uh, Genghis Khan? Genghis Khan's empire never fell. What would the world have looked like? Right, right. It, it, you don't know. Or even it's if it really would have fell a hundred years later, or a hundred yes. years earlier, or yes, exactly. Any one of those could vastly spiral. Or, or the Great Alexander, the Library of Alexander, never burned down. Right. What would that have done for humanity? Where would we be today? Did it burn? I mean, down? that was. Ooh, yeah, I mean, Whoa, oh, oh, oh. we don't even, I mean, you and me take faith that that existed. We right. look at historical exactly. accounts that say, but you and I don't, where could you point where we go? Well, you and me go to Alexandria and go. Yeah, where was it? Where was it? <laughs> Show me on a map where it was. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I, 
I, I think mind play dimensional uh, could definitely be a thing. I, I think, you know, alternative Earths could easily house life that could be substantially more advanced than us. I mean, the probability of Earth's orbit being the same as it is is also astronomical amongst all those dimensions, the conditions of the planet. I mean, there's so many different insane factors that can change life anywhere. So the one thing that I think that's good about dimensionality, but where I also get mad at scientists, they'll say, oh, these things are more dimensionality than they are space because of distances. And you're like, okay, so if you can go from one reality, which has, like you'd say, it's literally you, me, and putting their hand and suddenly we're in a different dimension versus traveling vast amounts of space. Why does distance have anything to do with any of that? Right. I mean, that's, that's, I, I don't know. I think, I think you're, you're making vast assumptions without real evidence don't don't do that yet let's wait till we see what we get right like i've been watching skinwalker there's there's a lot of interesting stuff that's about to happen with humanity whether the government wants to control it or not it's going to happen and you watch blind frog I, ranch uh no you keep telling me to god you gotta watch <laughs> blind frog it is so creepy there's so many like when you talk, so like Skinwalker, like, yeah, they got stuff going on there or whatever. But Blind Frog, there's literally some sort of like military government organization that keeps coming in and like doing shit to their site and stealing stuff and doing things during the show. Like the production crew has had stuff yep. stolen. It's like, yep. like they're, right. they're, the production crew had all of their video footage stolen one time. And they yeah. had, all they had to do was they had to record like them trying to find where their video production was ransacked so like you get to see behind the scenes but it becomes part of the show because they were recording like, stuff yeah it was it's it's just insane military shows up in the new season of skinwalker i won't say any more than that oh god dang it i'll have to watch i know yeah. i know in the the where i'm at they had just um well i won't talk i i know i know octavius wants to talk about skinwalker ranch coming up on a, a culting with Octavius. <laughs> gonna so definitely gonna gonna do that and those that that don't know, uh, people that don't know, it was Octavius's birthday recently, and we actually got him tickets to go to see Skinwalker Ranch live in Milwaukee, so he gets to go and watch their live show so as jealous. well. So it's it's gonna be super cool. I'm so excited for him. That's gonna be so cool. I I would there would be so many questions I'd want to ask. I'd be like, ah, they'd try to pull me away from the mic. I'm like, no, <laughs> I got more questions. God damn you, <laughs> science, science. Travis, I got <laughs> what um so what is it about do you think nasa has a like nasa knows why would nasa like nasa's not really known for making shit up why would nasa okay. make up a bunch of fake shit never a straight answer um well they've told astronauts to not say shit and they, astronauts have come forward and said they've you know seen a, a ufos they've Seeing that, I mean, they, you can search a, amount of astronauts who come up and said that they've seen something while out on that mission that cannot be explained, isn't easily explainable. Don't die, Nick. <laughs> Wrong tube. Oh, that's always brutal. But NASA, NASA has told astronauts the stuff that if you believe the insiders, they've been scrubbing photos since the 50s and 60s right. where they've gotten pictures of UFOs and they take them out. Uh, there's uh, live streams not... have you seen any of the nasa live streams yeah so uh, i've seen where they cut where, like they do stuff and something it. shows up and everybody screenshots it and then it goes it cuts it cuts out and goes black and then it comes it's... back on after whatever it is is gone you, you gotta watch the nasa report because all these senators bring up all these stuff they are actually both parties are well briefed on what's really going on and when they're asking the nasa officials and the dod officials those guys are literally there people are saying they're they're probably not lying because they probably brought in people who have no knowledge of that uh, on, on purpose because they even said how do you know they're not cutting that feed they said it's weird every time we get this up they go oh well we have no knowledge of them cutting the feed but and you he can goes, see so, it here's a clip of them cutting it like, yeah they did they showed them they're like oh yeah that must have just been maintenance that's what they say every time they whatever the official nasa they'll repeat whatever it says on the the prompter they go, oh, from our stuff, that was this, this was this. I mean, there's, the there's got to be a numerical, lie. you know, 
how often do you know after the 30th time is it after the 40th time that they you know something shows up and it cuts like at what time but do you be like really how how many of the population cares about it see that's the thing if you keep lying as long as 80 percent of the people are willing to keep eating your shit you're gonna keep flinging them shit <laughs> right 20 percent, 20 percent might not be eating it but it doesn't matter you don't care about the 20 as long as the 80 right right i mean that's that's half of the dis dis disclosure is that's why there's so much grabbing our attention elsewhere because as soon as you stop paying attention to your bullshit social media triggers and start paying attention to hey why aren't you answering this question why aren't you telling me the truth? And then if 80% of the population started saying that, they'd be like, oh, fuck. Right. We can't have that. We can't have that. We got to give them something else. Quick, shoot a baby on TV. You know, I mean, they will do whatever they got to to keep you pointed away from trying to get answers about your reality. Right. That's why everybody's like, this is a matrix. And you go, maybe it's not a matrix. Maybe it's just you're lying. Yeah. <laughs> not maybe. And They're you, lying. You got to be lying. Yeah. What? They gotta be lying. The, I mean, how many people? The, and here's the thing: there are so many people are you out there. Me the government lies to people. Yes. <laughs> they. Uh, how many people? Like, because you're seeing, like, we wouldn't have all these TV shows. We wouldn't have Skinwalker Ranch, Blind Frog Ranch, the UFO, Ancient Aliens. We wouldn't have that. Sightings. You remember when we were growing up? Sightings. Yeah. There. What was the other one too? I can't remember. There was a bunch on the TV in the '90s and '80s. But if it weren't for Unsolved Mysteries. If it weren't for people watching shows like that, like, would they, A, would they care, and B, that proves that they care, and there's so many more of those shows happening now that that means that there are more and more people getting interested in it. And, and like you said, though, but when you and me sit there and say multi-dimension, there's people who tune off. Oh, aliens. There's other people who tune up. So we all know there's a mystery. It's just how many people are going to tune in to try and discover the... If I, like you said, they say men in black. You're like, oh, Will Smith, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, IRS agent. Oh, any. If I throw in any number, like, remember, Heineck. That's why, guys, Project Blue Book. Watch the History Channel one of it. Because they realized when they were lying to the public that the easiest, simplest lie will be eaten up like a spoonful because we are all skeptics. I'll even try to do that. When I'm seeing something, I try to come at it from a skeptical approach. And then I'll sit there and go, no, this isn't easy to quantify. And I'll try to find flaws in the answers they give. Most people won't. Guys, they had UFOs fly over the effing White House and they told the American population it was temperature inversions. That only explains the radar. That doesn't affect physical observations of it. Right. And and we all were like, okay. <laughs> keep feeding us. Enough. Keep feeding it to us. No you're right, government. You just keep shoving your hand up my butt and telling me what to think. I'm too stupid. And they go, yep, you are, because you're going to keep eating it when I spoon feed it to you. You're going to worry about what I put on the TV, Who who's murdering who, who's doing well, what. Well, that's What's another thing. Like this. A lot of people are like, the government, the government, gov the government. But this is NASA. They're not part of the government. Oh, but wh who who's all their employees? Why don't we look at their hired list at 1950? All former Nazis? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't talk about that. Wait, NASA was full of Nazis in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s? Yes. Yes, they were. Look it up. Werner von Braun. His whole rocketry team was working for NASA. Hail Hydra. Hail Hydra. <laughs> We laugh about that, but Stan Lee always talked about the main reason he did comic books was his only free journalism. He could put real issues out there and talk about things. How silly is race when you'd have mutants? Right. When you'd have mutants that could literally, like, you know, they look like a night crawler. They could teleport everywhere. How silly is that? You know? I mean, that was what he was bringing to people's attention. And the same thing. I mean, that was the whole Hydra concept. He was like, yeah, guys, nobody's paying attention that there is a lot of Nazis working in government offices after the World War II when we brought them over here. Yeah. Project Paperclip. Look it up. It's a known disclosed program that the U.S. Uh, United States government did. Who's the number? You have to be in the Air Force to get the to be an astronaut. Then they select who's not. If they're going to take a civilian up there. That's why Elon Musk and all these guys 
that are Bezos, you know, we're sitting there going, okay, billionaires going to space. That's not the greatest. Part of me goes, yes, it is. Because if they start making it easy for us all to get into space, that's going to be a lot harder for the government to go, uh, uh, when people start seeing things. Yeah. How are they going to cover that stuff up? Well, and even on Mars, NASA guys, Mars was, they were like, look back, idiot. Trump, Bill Clinton comes out. There's life on Mars. We have this bacterial comet that's fossilization. Not much else it could be. That's proof that there was life on Mars a long time ago. No, no, no. We're going to backpedal that. We're going to backpedal that, right? Uh, we did a 19 Vikings, Viking 2. He did an experiment on soil samples. I can't remember the scientist's name. They scooped out some soils, added some water. Oh, look, it's breathing. Oh, I'm changing. <laughs> You like the music? Uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty I do. Little, I love the little tune. <laughs> it's like, I feel like we should be wearing Victorian clothing. <laughs> do, do, do. For sure. Not a lot All of right, chatter in this little conversation this time around. I think everybody headed out during the break or is lurking. My theory is that when Stephen Hawking said, the, oh, we already talked about that one. So, yeah, it's been, <sighs> been some lurky, lurky, lurkies. I know we, we had mentioned earlier a bunch of our other friends and cohorts coming on stream today. Coming on tonight that might not normally also be on. So, and I know we've got people that are on vacation, and people out of town, and people doing trips. So, good luck they to all get of them. More watched. Yeah. I hope this gets watched after hours because there's there's some substance to the content. We'll just have to share. <laughs> just share it everywhere. Share it in all I, the places. All of the places. But NASA, last thing, I'll finish that note. Yeah. NASA said that they're preparing to find life on Mars. And that's a joke because they know there's life been on Mars for a long time. And right. They knew that, and the only reason they know, they're not saying it. There's a difference because, between like life on Mars and civilization on Mars. On Mars. Exactly. But I mean, like I said, if there is life on Mars, could there have been civilizations on Mars? Right. Four point. 4.6 billion years ago, Mars was had an ocean and atmosphere, right? And different cultures, the weird thing is, some weird stuff, if you want to ancient aliens for two seconds, there's a lot of ancient cultures that talk about there being a civilization on Mars and that a war decimated. And Zeron 90 is found there, which is only produced from atom bombs, nuclear bombs. And they're like, why we is know this of. there? That we know of. You're right, correct. There could be a natural way that nobody's discovered yet and seen. Because we're just one but, planet in an endless galaxy. Endless universe. Yeah, but we galaxies. do have a so so how do you come up with time, right? Like how would you know? Was anybody observing it 4.6 billion years ago? It's it's geochemistry dating. So they'll take they'll create a small um isotope of of the element they're talking about and watch how quickly it'll decay and then take a mathematical equation to say okay uh, based on this decay rate and it turning into this other element that gives us a rough understanding yeah. well we have like our scope of elements you know a hundred years periodic ago periodic table yeah a hundred years ago that periodic table did not look like it looks now no yeah we found new elements you're right and we're just one planet in a mm. solar system that is within a yeah. galaxy. Yep. There's no th nothing to say that there aren't all other elements that can't have that have some sort of a reaction to create that. Well, so this is where they're getting into those kind of arguments, right? Like, okay, are uh, is every solar system going to have different elements, right? I mean, the Big Bang, we say everything was what core base elements, hydrogen, right? And then you get helium's more complex, and so on, and so on, and so on. And, and that's our basic understanding of how the Big Bang works, right? The sun is just giant, you know, uh, he, or hydrogen engine just going off all the time, right? Causing a reaction. Um, so their theories are like, you know, base elements are, are pretty much the same everywhere. It's what can be manufactured into something more complex. That's those metal elements that they keep saying they keep finding. So you might be right. It may be a process that's a natural occurring, but we find it and we go, this can't be naturally possible. So we're saying it's a meta element, right? Because right. we think it takes a level of, of engineering to, to make that, like the hydrogen collider. That's how our, our future. See, people don't understand that collider is something that's going to eventually need to be mass produced 
manufacturer to be able to make some of these complex elements that we're going to need to drive us into space and and make and make more Mandela effect because really potentially when you're slamming I mean, one atom into the other and kind of be like I don't know what's going to happen when I slam these atoms together. I mean, you, like you said, the universe does it naturally. I mean, things are slamming together all the time. And a nebula, it's chaotic. Black hole, for God's sakes, we don't know what the hell goes on in there. Right. I mean, you're talking everything's... Ah, I'm crushed. Uh, it'd be insane. I, I don't know. I, fascinating to think about. It is. For sure. Oh, sorry. The, uh, Elka Mahal is, is, is doing its thing. <laughs> As I look over, I'm like, I've got my sparkling water here that i'm not drinking but i keep refilling my glass with other stuff uh, <laughs> before we get started i kind of what is your uh your schedule look like for streaming when when, when can stream? people find you where can where can they find you when they, can they find you well it's supposed to be i, I suppose i mean obviously if this is one of my stream times now uh thursday through i do thursday night and i do uh saturday sunday and monday okay um i'm thinking about maybe putting friday in there and rotating somewhere around uh but it's always 6 p.m central you know you and me in the same area uh i'm still doing primarily total war maybe eventually i'll get into warhammer we'll see are we not our diablo sorry i already do warhammer we'll see where it goes from there but why don't you yeah, do a pair like... why don't you just do a show like every week that's just talking about like a current news of the of ufos ufo news and stuff like that every week uh, i i would enjoy that but i, I don't i i don't i don't know <laughs> it doesn't seem like like i said even on your view count i think people are interested in the topic but a lot of people i think it it hits a fuzzy part of their brain and they'd rather tune out. I don't think they want to hear about it. There's a lot of podcasts that do. And you're right. I could probably find that niche of people, but I'm not sure it would be here on Twitch. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to. Something. Yeah, exactly. But and, you would have fun doing it. I, I probably would. They just need a category, a paranormal category on Twitch is what they need. I've been saying that for, for a very long time that they need a paranormal category because they would be super cool for people to go live stream with like on their phones in like a haunted house and do like paranormal research live on, on stream and or whatever. I would be. It would be really cool. GoPro, go yeah. into some of those places. There's a lot of haunted places here in Oklahoma. I've thought about doing that. But... I'm here see, to see King Iden handstand push-ups. Stop sexually harassing me, sir. I've said no. No means no. <laughs> Don't want to do high handstand push-ups? Hello, High Boy yeah, Street 11. Me. Thank you for the follow. Welcome on in. Lord, lift up. Hello. Uh, back on. Okay. Oh, you hurt. Christ. Well, well, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being in here. Thank you for the good, spiritual, uplifting comments much appreciated i uh blessing Aiden, were you raised as a as a religious person at all no no uh my my grandfather came back from the war and 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 uh married my grandmother she was quite religious methodist she tried to put it into him uh but you know him being a 12 year old being a hobo and working the trains he he saw a different version of life yeah um my own uh, spiritual beliefs and stuff like that. I've seen enough in this world that uh, I hold my own and, and I gladly have a discussion with anybody on that in a, in a forum that's usually more intimate. Yeah. Talking, I, uh, talking religion politics to the vacuum is difficult. I uh, I was raised Catholic, very, very, like, mm. my great-grandmother was an Irish Catholic and, and... I got raised a lot that, but I just, I saw so many, don't get me wrong. I'm, I still consider myself a Christian. Like I still mm. believe in Jesus and God, but a lot of the stuff that religions throw out there to me, I, I look at it and I go, there's so many contradictions to a lot of the theologies that are out there. Um, while I still believe in a God, I still believe in Jesus and what Jesus, you know, did. There's still a lot of things that I go that doesn't like a lot of the a lot of the organized religions 
have a lot of issues to be personally. I'm going to start our timer, by the way, because we got the, the Bronx. I mean, this is technically the potluck where we're talking about whatever. But I, I, I look at there's I, so I, many other things in the world. I am very much like Christian, but also I'm like, okay, but a lot of people are like, reincarnation isn't a thing. Like, that's bad. I'm like, no, but I believe that there is reincarnation. I think that that is a thing that happens. I believe mm-hmm. that you have past lives. There's, I mean, you have people that do hypnotism and stuff like that that do past life regressions where you bring back the memories of your past lives and like hypnotism is a scientifically proven thing so the, like how how is that out there there's just so many little things that don't make sense hypnotism uh, only the problem i have with that is they always say is the ability of of uh what do they call it um and they they prove that hypnotism is a thing, but whether or not it actually connects to like past life suggestiveness, right? How much is it suggestive versus not, right? Like, did you watch a movie earlier that day and that put it into your mind or something along those lines? Now, I am I am in a con- concurrence with you. I I currently order the Ethiopian Bible. Are you familiar with that? I know the of old, it. I know I've heard of it. So I don't it's the it largest. It, it's literally twice as big as the the king james bible you know because once again i don't believe people should tell me what i should shouldn't shouldn't believe it was found in the dead sea scrolls the book of enoch which you know which i own own a copy of and i read that and the flood makes way more sense when you read that because you're going okay wait a minute this is a completely different story than what you're told in the bible right And, and and like i said so i i believe you should dig into everything spiritual i'm a person that believes that you know um i i think it's paramount that we be christians in the sense that uh, i or of the abraham accords i think that you know the jews and and israel and and all that i think those those beliefs are very valid and i like the idea of aiming towards societal goals that are better for humanity in the long term and that's what i see when i read those books is i don't see okay king Aiden has to you know has a moral superiority for living these no i don't believe that at all i believe i need to be a good person for the betterment of everybody else right be a good person period that's why i i am a christian i'm a christian for everybody else because uh, i will tell you this if something ever happened to my daughter i live in a barbaric world the things i'll do to preserve my child will be very unchristian right protect my kid and I will have no problem doing that uh, as that. I use it as something to keep myself in line because, quite frankly, if I didn't have those restraints or 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 that moral guidance, God forbid what I would be. Because, I, like I said, you, we all, I think all for all humanity, we are all glad that we try to act by that semblance of morality. That's where I get in an argument with people. Well, morality is subjective. No, it's not. Morality comes back even when we can go back further than Christianity. We can talk about the, the you know, the uh, Samaria and the ancient king's stones and the judge's stones and all that morality that was tied to that then and the importance of it going forward through time has been the only reason as a society we are are functioning. And, and, and kind of hard to say otherwise because most pagan barbaristic societies do have a struggle, you know, with with staying cohesive yeah. you know i like i said you know I, my, my thought is always like be a good person like if you look at the core of a lot of religious stuff it's be a good person don't be a dick yeah. and you know a lot of times you see especially right now in the way that the world is especially in the united states it's like christianity is getting such a bad rap because of all of like these psychos that are like this is evil and that's evil and all of Do these people exist? are do those people are those people real see this is the thing you know we talk about twitter and people talk about hate speech and you go is that person a real person or a bot yeah how do you know who you're arguing with is that because extremities we wouldn't have gotten here the united states wouldn't have got here if we were extreme as many people believe it's always these outliers and you go how do you know that's not fed by somebody else right like everybody keeps talking about oh the fbi doing these false flag operations right how do we know? I mean, like I said, do you, when you talk to, I barely, I've talked to a lot of different people and people I would consider to be religious extremists. 
but they're not the hate-filled lunatics. I've, I've never met the hate-filled crate. Where do those people exist? I'm sure we find them. We see them on videos, Karens and stuff like that. But are they a product of, of, of boxing, uh, of being, you know, algorithms can steer you one way or another. Right. Are they an algorithm-steered person? And that's why they're so insanely extreme. I've seen it a lot in the like the anti-LGBTQ communities and the anti like other religions and, and races. And like, those... oh, oh, you believe another religion, you're going to hell. It's like no. Yeah. If if that yeah. were the case, like though the whole thing of Christian is God loves everyone and he loves you. Know, it says in there, he loves everybody equally. He loves you all. He loves all of his children. Because you don't believe the same thing as everyone else doesn't mean you're going to hell. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, like if he loves God you, can, he's not going to do that to you, sort of thing. It, it's it's only God can judge in my mind, right? Yeah. You can only say there's there's only, and what is God? See now you want to go down that rabbit mm. hole and go to me. What or is, you? Because you you're biggie, you're very big into like the science and the scientific theory and stuff like that. I think how it does that challenge it. your your religious connotations? Did you know most scientists were founded on the idea of trying to prove biblical stuff? And then they found out it was wrong because they were using it as religious doctrine. Oh, the earth is flat, right? Oh, the earth is hollow because it says it opens up the depths and the waters came forth from the depths and the firmament fell and it never rained prior to that and stuff like that. I, I look at physics and I look at I don't think the ancients were idiots. I, I think they had understanding of things. I think they didn't have context for explaining things in a lot of times once after the flood, because I do believe in the pre-Cambrian, um, I, I believe there was an advanced civilization that existed on this earth prior to humanity. I don't know if they were humans or not, but they're the monument builders, the ones we cannot replicate today because I've yet to see a scientist go ahead and build a sandstone block from a copper chisel that'll quickly wear off after three strokes. Not to mention the Sphinx's erosional pattern at the base makes no damn sense. Um, so religion and stuff to me, like when man, let's say, let, let's let's just do a quick thought experiment for, for one moment. All right, I'm doing my best because I've been alcohol. Er, early parts of the solar system, right? early days of the solar system. So we say Earth is 4.6 billion years old. So the idea is that temperatures cooled and coalesced and these rocks that were spiraling around the sun slowly started to cool and form lumps of rocks, right? And, and that's where you get your planetoids, right? Or gases, depending on Jupiter, if you want to look at it on that. Yeah. So early Blue, days of the Blue solar system. Big enough, so. Deep in theories. I think there's more, but I never really <laughs> But it, you look at the moon, right? So the moon and the earth relationship, right? It, it's pretty phenomenal. It lines up perfectly with eclipses. Um, but it's first initial impact on this planet when it first collided and started there. So if you and me could teleport 300 million years ago, the moon would be a lot closer than it is today, right? Because it's slowly drifting on meters. We can calculate how fast it's it's going away. So a long time ago when it was closer and the oceans and stuff have a huge tidal impact, right? As it goes around, it, it affects the tide. Yeah. So your days would be longer, right? And early, when the moon first hit this planet, it had longer days. The earth didn't rotate nearly as fast. Do you think that the moon actually hit the planet, like collided? That is the current scientific theory. And yes. do you think that's the same effect that took care of dinosaurs? No. Okay. That that was that that was this was at the beginning is what our understanding is four point six billion years ago this collision happened that long ago. Uh, now there are other cultures that have talked about later that the moon showed up later, and and that's where you get space station moon from. Uh, but from science yeah. theory, for those that don't know, science, that, that the moon isn't an organic matter; it's a constructed matter. It, 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 there's there's a lot of crazy theories about. It about the moon but uh what what science says is that it was a, a taking off of the crust and that's why it's cavernous is because it just kind of collided and then flung off like flotsam and then stayed really really close right by getting away which really doesn't make any sense right because if you were really that close wouldn't it just i mean what, what do we, yeah. it, it, the moon makes no sense it and would a lot hit of people and the two gravities that. would hold them together right 
yes, into a big planet. Why wouldn't it, right? Unless it kept flinging off. It was so oblong, it kept flinging off. But if it flung off, it, it, I don't know. We'd have to do calculations based on that. But from earlier models, it's a little hard to explain. And so most people kind of skip away from that. They say there was an early collision, there was an injection, and then it just kind of stayed there and slowly started to creep away. Wouldn't the impact it, have changed the shape of Earth? It did. It, uh, uh, and then Earth alleged. wouldn't have been spherical anymore either. We're not spherical now. We're we're very. Um, um, if you look at an actual model with the oceans removed, we're, we're kind of a fat, ugly little planetoid. You'll have to you'll have to look at it. You can look at an actual model of what the Earth is. You know, it's got a big fat belly, and you know the tops kind of come to a little odd long shapes. So it's not perfectly spherical. But, I mean, we see a lot of spheres in space, right? We see the moon spherical. We know Mars is spherical, Mercury, Venus, you know, all these spherical objects, right? So that's something to do with the sun hitting this black foam, causing a decompression. And for some reason, it creates these gravitational trenches that, that lock the planets into orbits based on positive, negative, electromagnetic, you, you name it. However, with the moon being that close and in a geosequitous orbit, right, that would mean the days would be a lot longer because as the moon stays locked in a fixed position, it's closer, it's going to cause a slower rotation of the planet just because of the shifting of the oceans. So where do you get big life forms from? Hey, dinosaurs got really big and they look like they had feathers. So... Tales of giants, were those just early humans? Humans used to be big. I, no, I don't aspire to this. I, I, otherwise, uh, the... Wait, 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 wait. I, hold on. You mentioned giants. I got to say, do you believe giants used to exist? And have you seen the footage, the, the pictures, the pictorial evidence of the bones of ancient giants? I, I do. I do believe giants existed. I do think that giants, though, were not of our genus. Do you think that the Smithsonian is hiding all of those bones and like literally just I grabbing goes, them to prove it? I, I think it goes. I think it goes back for the, the 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 church to some degree. You say you're Catholic, and I'm not trying to offend, but the Catholics. Have I been used to be Catholic. Secrets. I was Catholics, brought up Catholic. That is a very big yeah, distinction. Um, Catholics have been hiding secrets from humanity for a lot longer. The Knights of Templar. You can even follow some of their journal entries where they went and destroyed sex sex where women were were teaching the the gospel of mary magdalene where they had active priestesses as, as leaders right that started and, and i'm not trying to get into misogynistic or anything like that but there was definitely the catholic church definitely has been no different than the pharisees was at the time of jesus's crucifixion hey you have to do it this way you have to wear these clothes you have to act this way to get into heaven it's no different than what the Pharisees were doing, and that's why Jesus opposed them in the first place. I, I think it could go back further than that if you want to go back. I, I mean, like I said, I think those I, giants might have been like the whole Nephilim that they talk about. Yes. And that's uh, why they're they, getting rid of them and hiding them and destroying them or whatever. Well, I think they're trying to get their DNA and they want those bones because they can, they want to remake them. I, I, I think what you're living in, if you want to go, okay, we'll go down for a rabbit hole. Program. Rabbit holes. We got six part minutes of me, of rabbit holes left. Part of me thinks that a lot of um, the elites with DNA and all that stuff, they're already trying to bring back the Willy Mammoth and the saber tooth tiger. I think they want to bring back the Nephilim. And I think they want to do that because they think they can get power from it. The Nazis were obsessed with the dark sun. They were a huge religious institution that was scouring the earth, looking for giants, looking for all these lost, you know, ancient civilizations that were derived of gosh knows what. And they were performing dark and disturbing rituals to try to supposedly contact these entities, right? All right. I think the Nephilim, if you, you've read the book of Enoch, you remember what, 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 so the whole story, guys, if you haven't read the book of Enoch, this is going to sound really damn weird because the whole book is really weird. It's really interesting because you're reading it. The story makes sense of the flood, but the way that Enoch writes everything 
is first off, God sounds like an alien. <laughs> yeah, he does. He lands. It? And all the angels sound like aliens because he's talking about these watchers. And the watchers beg Enoch to go to God and say, hey, we're sorry. We didn't mean to do this. And God tells Enoch, you listen, I can't forgive them. Like I told them all at the beginning when we first did all this, that this was going to happen. I gave men wives because they are of flesh and you are not. You are of energy. You go down and you screw with them. You screwed up all of creation, not just your kids, your giants who are going around eating humans, you made a flesh part spirit being. And so when they die, they're, they're going to be stuck on this earth and they'll be as the demons. And that's half of what explains it. Because the Nephilim, even if they die in the flesh, they're stuck here because they can't go to heaven or, or to anywhere because they, are, they were literally a mesh between us and whatever angels were. Yeah. If you go in the, this is what the book of Enoch literally says. And so if, if you go, that by explains that, so, so many of the paranormal things that happen in the world, where, where there's and the, it, possessions and, and or whether you're talking about the, the, uh, the gin or any of, any of that kind of stuff. Yes, that's exactly because that's, it, it kind of, that's what the book, I mean, especially Enoch talks about. And then the watchers, he locked them up in the earth. They didn't go anywhere either. He didn't send them to hell. The watchers who he said, you are cursed, you will be permanently locked up in the earth. You'll watch your kids on the surface of the earth. They're trapped here too. And I will never give you a reward. You'll never be forgiven because you permanently screwed up this plant. It wasn't. So that's where the book of Enoch contradicts the Bible. God in the Bible was man had gotten so wicked. No, in the book of Enoch, these angels came down. They taught their wives, made their wives immortal. They taught them a bunch of magic and sorcery and were telling them to go have orgies and all this stuff. And they it were sounds crazy. great to me. I mean, I don't know about you, but let's, let's go. I mean, it, it orgies does, of angels. It, I'm there. But the alien god that's described in Enoch goes, "This screws up everything because this isn't going to progress humanity along the same track. They're going to have these supernatural creatures here, things that are doing that, and this isn't the reality we want for them." That's what I get when I read the book of Enoch. And so, to me, you know, now once again, I, you know. I, Folks, I'm not saying this is necessarily what I believe in, but I, I can't unbelieve it. Like, I like to take in information and I'll say, okay, how does this fit into everything? Like right. you said, it checks the boxes for paranormal. It also checks the box of why why other cultures talk about floods that weren't exactly wiped out. That's That's the thing that the Bible tells you doesn't make sense. The Bible says it was only Noah's family, right? The book of Enoch says that Noah was hiding, and so were other humans, and that he was just doing this to destroy the Nephilim, and the humans that were all banging these sorceresses and having these orgies because they were feasting on blood. They were killing their babies, eating them, and doing all this stuff to gain immortality and all this stuff. And so the God was like, this is, what the hell kind of society is this going to turn into? So... Enoch was interesting. It was a very interesting read. My perspective, my my perception on it was I found it as valuable information that goes in my database where I will continue to constantly yeah, analyze it. And you have to it file to it against it. all the other information. Because really, this is what I do. 100%. Like I look at all all of all religions, all religions, yep. be like, this fits. This square this square block fits in this square hole of Christianity. Mm -hmm. This this Buddhist circular spherical block fits in this Hindu you know s situation. This spiritual, this paranormal alien story fits in this you know Catholic square you know. And you're constantly placing these things. Like okay, let me figure out because you want to. The, the ultimate goal is understand the universe and existence itself and kind of how it all yeah. fits together and what really well, happened. What else are we here for to not try to figure out things? Yeah, some of it, I'm not going to sit there in a library for all eternity where somebody says somewhere in this library, there's the book with all your answers. I'm not going to be the guy who's going to never leave that library. I'm the guy who's going to go check one book out, go home, I'll read it when I get to it, and then go, maybe I'll never find the book, but I'll still be getting some knowledge, yeah. you know? Uh, so I'm not... A Moby Dick. I'm not. Uh, I'm not hunting that white whale till it kills me. 
you know, or, or Captain Ahab, sorry, Captain Ahab. Yeah, Moby Dick was the whale. The Moby Dick was the whale. I'm yeah. Moby Dick so, right now. There you go. <laughs> He's got a big white dick. No. <laughs> uh, so. Sorry, uh, sorry, inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> of course it would end me right this, there. But, but like I said, the, the Mara Bharata is the next one I'm going to read. Uh, the Hindu Sanskrits. Um, I think it's funny because Oppenheimer, you know, I think there's a connection there with Oppenheimer quoting Shiva when he said, now I've become the destroyer of worlds, I've become death. Yeah. I I don't think he read that book uh, simply because he was a redded man, a readed man, or however you would say it. Readed, readed, readed? Read, educated. Well, well read? A well, well read, read yes. man. There you go. Well read individual. And I've been drinking, uh, guys. Boom. That yeah, you will always beat me in the pronunciation market, sir. <laughs> I fail utterly. Platitudes. I will platitudes. I will be able to pronounce things and you'll just be able to cover every other aspect of the brain. <laughs> I uh, it never gets me anywhere. It just makes me psychotic. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Somebody on here somewhere is going to come in and be like, that man is insane. <laughs> or he's genius. One of the two. One or the other. How close the two uh, things are parallel, right? <laughs> well, I, right. I want to say thanks for joining me tonight and chatting with me for Off the Pod. Hopefully Thank you had you a me. good time. Guys, you can go and check out King Aiden on Twitter. Not on Twitter. Are you on Twitter? Uh, I am on Twitter. Yeah. I and most of all the stuff on there is alien stuff. Sorry, guys. That's all I post about is mostly aliens. Aliens. Ancient aliens. Current aliens. And, aliens. and some video game stuff. Some but video mostly game. aliens. You guys yeah. can find them on Twitch. Twitch. Here, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's, I want to watch a clip. Let's watch a clip of yours. Oh, God, no. This what do you think it'll be? What What is the guess? What is the over under? My uh, butt doing something to a chair, most likely. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's take a look. See. Oh no! Total War Warhammer oh, right, Three. Oh, you can get oh, me thank in. God. No, the clip is. Uh, oh, there's a guy coming though. Drive, oh, drive, drive, drive. Can't even hear it. Take. Can't even hear it. Gee. He took your car. Yep. Oh, rogue. Yep. There's that no audio on that one. What the hell? Oh, thank God. <laughs> got out of the vehicle. Guy parachuted on there and on top of the. Oh of my God! I <laughs> <laughs> There's Newsflash, King Aiden is an alien. That's probably true. Are you an alien? Uh, it would be stupid for me to say so. But for me, just between you and me, between friends, nobody else, nobody else, nobody else is listening. Just you and me, are you an alien? What do you define as an alien? Not of this earth? Not of this earth. Then no, I, I am not of this earth. Okay. I don't think any of us are. Let's be honest. That, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> I was gonna say. I don't think any of us. I don't think you are really. I corporeal. don't think mankind actually came from the planet Earth originally. Well, the the flesh belongs here. Let's put it that way. But I mean, I was born here. But yeah, there we go. But the species did it order. I don't. Know. I I think identity crisis and you are like half brothers because you both have this Iden in your name. And so every uh, once you, in a while I'll read it and I'll be like, oh yeah, Aiden was on. Like, I mean, Identity Crisis was on. I'm, I'll be joined by oops. Identity Crisis. I mean, King Aiden, son of a bitch. <laughs> so many times that I've done that. When I say one of you and I mean, mean the other one. Well, my little daughter's coming in here. Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, we're wrapping up. We're wrapping up. Wrapping it up. Ugh. So yeah, guys, go and check out King Aiden IV on his Twitch. Doing a lot of Warhammer lately. Hopefully we can convince him to do some other stuff. Maybe some a weekly, even a monthly, even a monthly alien stream would be awesome. I will do that with you if you want. <laughs> or if you want me to try to do it, I, I will try to do it. But I, I just don't, you keep me focused. If I sit there on my own, we'll go all over the place. Yeah, you need a, you need a co, co-host, co something. Uh, uh, 100%. Something. I need somebody who to direct me. <laughs> maybe, maybe when I start doing this full time, I'll be able to have the time to come in and and hey, spend spend a night a week with you, and we can we can That'd do it. Awesome. awesome, awesome, guys. We're gonna do a raid. Thank you guys all for hanging out here tomorrow. Make sure to remember tomorrow I'll be hanging out with Bentley. We'll be doing a co-stream. Bentley will be streaming. I will be streaming. We will be streaming. 
Adventure Quest 3D. So come and join us for that tomorrow right here on the stream. Wednesday is tabletop role-playing. As usual, every Wednesday is tabletop role-playing. This Wednesday is the Stolen Souls campaign continues. So join us for the Stolen Souls campaign. And of course, our very special, you used your channel points for this special event. Yes, you used channel points for our second celebrity guest stream. Our celebrities are going to be author Eric Scott DeBee, author Chris A. Jackson, and author Ed Greenwood. They're all going to be joining us to do some tabletop role-playing on Saturday. We're going to be joined also by Fight in the Boxes, Mark, who's the creator of Mechanical Corners, and uh, we're going to be role-playing Mechanical Corners with all those guys on Saturday. If you can only make one more stream this week, make sure you join us on Saturday for that particular show. It's going to be a lot of fun, some tabletop role-playing, some shenanigans. I get to role-play with some legends in the industry, and I am super stoked, and I'm a little intimidated. I might have a little bit of imposter syndrome, but you know what? Fuck it. We're going to have some fun. We're going to role-play, and we're going to we're gonna have a good time. So make sure to join us on Saturday. Also, make sure to check out King Aiden this week. You said Thursday and Friday you're going to be streaming? Thursday and Friday, yep. Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and the rest of the week and 24-hour streams. No, I don't do... No? No. no? <laughs> Most of my streams are like three hours if I'm lucky. <laughs> and butt clenches. Everybody butt but, clenches. We don't do those anymore. Why not? <laughs> what the hell? That I was getting the wrong kind of crowd in there. It was like Bentley, Penny, and Nye. <laughs> it just became about my butt. <laughs> I'm a human, damn I mean... You stop doing a oh, fuck that unfollow. Where's the unfollow? <laughs> unfollow King. Oh, no. I mean, that's the whole reason I was. Am I part of the bad crowd? Jesus Christ! Yeah. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> All right, guys, we are gonna go and throw. Up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Speaking of Penny, we we're just talking about you, Penny. Penny is the big tenacious D fan. Somebody mentioned Jack Black's earlier. Yes, we're talking about Aiden's butt. <laughs> we talk about Aiden's butt, and Aiden's like, I was drawing the wrong car out crowd. This, like, this, I was getting people not, like Penny, and all they that. wanted to do was see my butt. That's true. And now Penny is here. You <laughs> say it, and she appears. Push up handstands took over from the butt clutches. There you go. I will work on it. I did. Push up we'll handstands. Naked, naked handstands. Your back turn. I think that'll get me bad. <laughs> Only if it's the backside. I mean, you just have to do it with your back turned and you'll be fine. I'm going to have to get a wax. Get a wax. <laughs> Listen, your butt is how we became friends. I apologize for nothing. <laughs> I, wait, no. <laughs> She's like, awesome. you send me a picture of that butt. Show that butt. Shoot a butt. Guys, we're going to do a raid. We're going to raid over to Steven the Shark. Steven the Shark is co-streaming with Bentley. Bentley will be joining me tomorrow. We're going to co-stream. Bentley and I will be co-streaming tomorrow. We're going to be doing Adventure Cast 3D. We're going to raid Steven the Shark. Make sure to give him some follows. We'll try and help out his numbers here a bit. We like to support the community. I always say, rising tides raise all ships. And so if all of us stick together and we help each other out as streamers, all of you who are streamers that are out there, make sure to help each other out. Help each other grow give them shout outs talk about them on streams penny Aiden, everybody who's with us king Aiden, uh identity crisis who again just now i just flip flop their names i, I knew i would do it but uh <laughs> you know octavius <laughs> bentley pixel Nicks, so many people in this community and a community adjacent rising tides raise all ships help the other streamers help your feather st fellow streamers raid them talk about them and help them out guys we're gonna raid steven the shark come along with us Come along with us and raid Stephen the Shark and help him out. Help him grow. Give him a follow. Hang out with him. He's another tabletop role player. He does lots of tabletop role playing. He's a great GM from what I hear. Uh, so, guys, come along with us, and we will chat with you later down the road. For King Aiden IV, a.k.a. King Aiden 4, I am Nick from Epic Realms, and we will <laughs> see you tomorrow, and we will also see you down the road. Have a great one, guys, and take care, and good night.